Hello friends, welcome to this course. In this course, we are going to create an e-commerce shopping cart using React, Redux and Material UI. Okay, so are there any course requirement or prerequisite? Okay, so to work on this project, you must have the following skill sets. You should have basic knowledge of HTML. You should have basic knowledge of JavaScript and you should have basic knowledge of ReactJS. Okay. So what is the course objective? So the participant will be able to implement React and Redux concepts in their current and future projects. So what you will learn in this course? We are going to create an e-commerce shopping cart using React, Redux and Material UI. So who are the targeted students? Students with no React, Redux experience, front-end developers, and anyone who want to learn React, Redux and Material UI. So by the end of this course, you will have the following skill sets and on regarding practical and real life scenario of creating e-commerce shopping cart using React, Redux and Material UI. So let's see what we are going to create. So we are going to create a shopping cart like this. OK, so let me refresh. So if I click on add to product, you can see the product has been added to the cart. And if I click it once more, this count has been changed to two and the total amount is changed to fifty nine point eight zero dollars. And if I click on this product, this product has been added and the amount has been changed. OK, here you can remove the product as well. OK, if I remove this, we'll get removed. If I click on add, it will be added to the cart. If I click on proceed, you can see a form. If I click it again, it will go here. You can sort it by order. So if you want to see the products from lowest price, you need to click on lowest so here the products will be shown from the lowest to the highest price okay and if i click on highest the products will be shown from highest to the lowest okay here you can select the size as well if i click on excel so these are all the products which are excelling size okay if i click on double excel so these are the two products which have double excel size and here the count is two so if i click on medium so these are the two products with medium size and the products are two products. If I click on all, you can see all the six products. OK, and we will create a backend uh, for this products. OK, uh, we will use Postman to create the backend. We can uh, and even we will use Node Express and Mongoose to create the backend. OK, and we will be using Material UI to style this project. OK. So what you see here is all the material UI components. OK, so these are all material UI components. So let me refresh. So for uh, styling this project, we will be using material UI. And once you finish this project, then you can uh, create your own e-commerce store or you can create a different kind of e-commerce store using the logic which I have used. So this is it for this introduction lecture and I'll see you in the next video. OK. Till then, take care and bye bye. Hello, friends. Welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to review tools and technologies that we are going to use throughout this course. So, we will use Create React app. So, you need to go to this link github.com slash Facebook slash Create React app. Okay. So, we will use Create React app to set up our application. Okay. Then, we will use Redux. Redux is a state manager for React and we can create a scalable and predictable application using Redux. Next one is Node.js. So you need to go to Node.js.org and from here, once again, let me refresh it. Okay, from here you need to download Node.js and you need to install it in your machine. So it is recommended that you need to use LTS version, which is long term support. OK, so once you click on this, this download will get started and then you will you need to install it. So if you are a Windows user, you need to go to downloads and here there are options for Windows user for Mac. OK, so I'm using Mac, so I have installed it and I have download and install it already in my machine. OK, then we need. MongoDB, OK. So you need to go to this URL and here, here are the installation instructions. So for Mac, you need, you need to follow this instruction. Okay. 
and for windows you need to follow this instructions so in the coming up lectures i will show how to install mongodb in mac because i am using mac for windows users you just click it and you need to follow the instructions it is very simple then we will use material ui to style our front end application Uh, then you need Visual Studio Code. So this is the code editor. If you go to code.visualstudio.com, so here is the option to download. I am using Mac, so from here I have downloaded and installed it. If you are a Windows user, you need to click on this arrow and you need to install. Click on this, download it, and install it on your machine. Okay. Then we need Google Chrome. I hope everybody has Google Chrome in their machines. Okay. If you don't have it, then just download chrome and install it in your machine then we need two uh, extensions for chrome first one is react dev tools which is react developer tools so if i click here on the first link so this is the extension which we required i have already installed it so it is showing me remove from chrome but in your case it will show install okay then we need redux okay from here only we can check uh, the extension search okay redux so if i click on redux so this is the redux developer tool so again we uh, we need this uh, extension so i have already installed it okay so you you just need to install this extension then we need postman so for that you need to go to postman.com we are using postman because in this project we are going to use postman to create new products create new orders and delete them so it is very important to install okay so to install postman you just uh, need to go to postman.com and at the bottom you will find download app okay so you need to click here and you need to download the app okay and you need to install it in your machine and how to use postman i'll show you in the coming lectures this is it and in visual studio code uh, if I go to Visual Studio Code, so if I click on extension, there are a few extensions which you need. So this is the extension which you need, ES7 React Redux, GraphQL, React Native Snippets. So this helps you to write the code in a faster way. There are shortcuts, okay? So so that uh, will help us to write the code in, in the fastest way, okay? So you need to install this extension in Visual Studio Code. Then there are a few more like auto rename tag. Okay. So that this will help you to uh, rename the tag. Let's say this is the example they have shown. Like if you have an opening tag and if you change from uh, at one side, the other side will also get changed. Okay. So if you want to install this, please install auto rename tag. Then we have bracket uh, pair colorize. So this will help to color the bracket, okay? The opening bracket and the closing one. So, so it is showing a different color, okay? This one is purple and this one is blue, okay? Then we have color highlight. This will help us to uh, highlight the uh, CSS color, uh, CSS color. Suppose uh, this color tag is pink, so it will show a pink color, okay? If you want, you can install it, okay? Then there is one more like prettier, okay? So this will help us to uh, format the code. It is very important that we uh, use this extension to format the code. So please install this extension as well. And rest of the extensions are not so important. These are the four or five uh, extensions which are super important. So you just need to install this. So this is it uh, for this video. And I'll, I have shown you uh, what you need okay so just install everything which is required and we will start uh, creating our setup in the next lecture by using create react app so i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back in this lecture we are going to set up our application by using create react app okay for that we need to go to visual studio code and here we need to open the terminal by pressing control and back tick key which is about the tab key okay so I'll create the folder in my desktop. So I need to go to my desktop. So for that, I'll type ls and then cd desktop. So if you are a Windows user, then you need to go to your destination like D drive, C drive. Okay, there you can create your folder. So here I'll use npx create react 
app and the name of my app will be react shop cart and i'll press enter so it will take some time to create our application because it will install all the packages which are required like uh, react react dome react scripts etc okay so let me pause this video and once the application has been installed then i'll come back so now the application has been installed and we need to go to the folder so i'll go to the folder by clicking open folder and i'll go to react shop cart and i'll press open so here are all the files okay so again we need to open the terminal by pressing control and back tick key and here i will write npm start So it will start the development server okay and it is redirected to localhost 3000 so where the application is okay so okay now you can see the application start running and now uh, we will delete all the files which are not required so logo.svg is not required so let me remove this then we don't require index.css so let me remove this then we don't require app.test.js let me remove this and we don't require app.css because we are going to use material UI. Then we need to go to okay here one more file setup test.js. Let me remove this as well. Then we need to go to index.js and here I will remove okay. Sorry, let me go to in app.js and here I will remove all this header code. Okay, let me minimize this. And then app.css and logo.svg we don't require. Let me save this. And let's go to index.js. And from here also we don't require this import index.css. Okay, let me save this. Now if I go to app.js and here, let me remove this last name. And let's say if I uh right header okay let me save this and let's go to the browser okay here it is header okay so it is working fine so let's remove this report web stack because i don't think so it, it is required let me sorry let me remove this let's try to remove this now let's remove this from here let's save this Okay, here it is. We don't require this. Now let's go to the browser. Okay, everything is working fine. Now what we can do is we will create a header and footer. Okay, we'll create header and footer. Mm, so for that, uh, in the source folder, we will right click and we will create a new folder and name it as components. And in components, I will create a UI file, uh, sorry, UI folder. So UI and inside ui i will create a new file with the name header.js and the second one and the next one will be footer.js so footer.js okay so this will be a functional component so i will write a shortcut for that so r a f c e press tab so this is our header let me save this and for footer i will again write r a f c e press tab footer let's save this now we need to go to app.js and we will import this header and footer okay so let's import import header and if i click here oh sorry import header from dot slash components slash ui slash header okay and here i will write the header component okay and now we need the footer component as well so import footer from dot slash components slash 
UI or else you can do it like this also. If you want a shortcut, let me try this footer. And if I click on this, so you can see we got the import URL, this import path. So this is much better. Okay, let me try again. So it will be helpful for us. So if I write footer, and if you click on this, okay, if you click on this, so it automatically import the path. Okay, so we don't have to remember the path. So this is it. Uh, I'm saving this file and let's go to the browser. So here you can see header and footer. We got the header and footer. So this is the header uh, component and this is the footer component. Let me close this index. So in app.js, we have imported two components, which are header and footer. So the styling part is remaining so that we can do uh, by using material UI. So in the next lecture, I will uh, install material UI. If you go to material UI, okay, let me click on get started. So I'll do that in the next lecture. So we have to install material UI. Then we need to install the icons of material UI. Then we need to use the Roboto font. So there are a couple of things which we need to install. So that I will install in the next lecture from material UI and then we will style the header and footer. Okay, so that we will do in the next lecture. So we have successfully set up our application and we have created two components which are header and footer. So I hope you like this video and uh, this is it for this video and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, till then take care and bye-bye. Hello friends, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to work on the header part. For that we are going to use material ui app bar component this component provides the basic functionality that you would expect out of a header such as spanning the entire length of the screen and always staying at the top but for that we need to install material ui so let's go to the home page and here we need to click on get started and this is the line we need to copy and we need to go to the terminal and first I will stop the terminal by pressing Ctrl C and I'll paste the line of code which I have copied and press enter. Let's go back to the website and then we need this Roboto font. So let's copy this font. So let's copy this path. Let's go to the uh, files and here we, in the public folder, I'll go to index.html and after this, line of code we will paste it okay and i'll close this file then one more thing we required is the font sorry is the icons so icons so this is the line of code which we need to install okay so let's copy this and let's go back to the terminal and here we need to paste it and press enter now let's go back to the website and let's go to app bar component so app bar so this is the app bar component if i click here so this is too much of code written here but we don't require everything from here i'll show you what we required okay so let's first uh, the installation has been completed okay so let me write npm start let's go to header.js and first we need to import uh, we need to import this app bar okay and then we need to import toolbar so what i'm going to do is here i'm going to write import app bar from material ui code and this we need to put in a curly braces okay then we need toolbar so let me copy this and i'll paste it after this app bar okay then inside this, I'll remove this header. And here I will write app bar and I'll close this. And here I will write toolbar. Okay. And inside this toolbar, I will write the name of the website, which is React. 
shop cart let me save this and if i go to the browser and if i refresh the page it is still compiling okay so here it is uh, we got this uh, app bar component at the top okay and here if i write something let's say if i write hello and if i save this if i go to the browser okay sorry not here after this app bar if i write something and if i save and if i go to the browser you can see that hello has been hidden inside this app bar so this we will fix in the coming up lectures we want this hello to be outside this app bar okay so right now it is covered inside this so we don't want that and then here if you can see if i go to the material ui website here it is written for position static okay so by default it is uh, fixed if i write position static then what happens let's see position equals to static if i save this and if i go to the browser now this hello now as you can see we uh, now we can see this hello outside this app bar and the styling has also been disturbed so we don't want this we want this app bar uh, to be fixed at the top okay so by default it is fixed so if i write this and if i save this so as you can see this app bar is at the top and it is a fixed okay but if i remove this still it will be fixed save this and let's go so now as you can see it is fixed at the top okay so this was regarding the app bar component so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back so before we move on to styling and customizing this app bar using material ui styling system i wanted to add a cool feature to this that is actually shown on their documentation so if you go to their documentation and if you go to app bar and if i scroll down so here it is scrolling okay so there are two options for scrolling the first one is hide app bar and the second one is elevate app bar so hide app bar means the app bar hides on scroll down to leave more space for reading so if i scroll this app bar hides okay so this is one option and the second one is elevate app bar it means the app bar elevates on scroll to communicate that the user is not at the top of the page so if i scroll you can see the app bar is at the top and the text goes inside this bar okay so we are going to use this effect so let's see the source code okay so if i click here you can see the source code so this is the effect which we are going to use so let's copy this function so i'll copy this function and let's go back to the visual studio code and here about this header function we'll paste the function which we have copied let's remove this prop type we don't require okay let me remove this and then we need to import use scroll trigger okay so let's copy this and here i need to paste it if i save this and if i go to the browser so you won't see anything because here there is no text okay so let's go back to the source code and let's copy this array and let's go to the visual studio code and inside app.js i'll paste the array which we, which i have copied and here instead of 12 i will give 120 and i'll save this file so it will make 120 copy of this text okay and if i go back so now you can see we have a lot of text and if i scroll you can see the app bar is at the top and the text goes inside this okay so this is the effect which we want so let's go back to visual studio core and remove the things which are not required so okay and one more thing which we wanted to do is i'll copy this 
elevation scroll because here as you can see this elevation scroll wraps this app bar and toolbar so we have to do that okay so let's wrap the app bar and toolbar inside this so let's save this and let's go back again now i'll refresh so we are getting the same effect okay now if i come back here so the things which are not required is this target window because this is the only being set here because the demo is in iframe okay because the example because the demo is in iframe so that is the reason they have added this line of code so we don't require this so let's remove this and let's remove this text as well and rest of the things are required okay let's save this and let's remove this as well okay and now if i go back if i refresh everything will be working fine and it seems to be okay now let's go back to visual studio code in app.js we don't require this so let's remove this and if i save this so everything is gone and we have successfully added this elevation scroll effect okay so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back with our header in place and now that you know how to import material UI components and use them, it's time to figure out how to customize those components with their styling system. The first part of the styling system that I want to talk about is specifically the theming system that they have set up for us. And how can you use the theming system to centralize your styles and create a consistent look throughout your application? The first part of the theming system to really understand is the palette. The palette is a way to manage the colors used in your application, but Material UI actually takes it a step further and provides some really interesting functionality around it for us. So let's go over to Material UI documentation and we will take a look how we can set up the theming system and what they already provide for us. So here we are going on Material UI styling section and so that under styles and then basics on their documentation page. So here it says, why use material UI styling solution? So it says that it, it is blazingly fast, okay? And the second point is, it is less than 15 KB gzipped and no bundle size increase if used along material UI. And the third one is that it uses JS, JSS at its core, a high performance JavaScript to CSS compiler, which work at runtime and server so we can use javascript inside css so how to install this so we need this line of code to install the styles okay let's copy this line of code and let's go to visual studio code and here i'll stop the terminal by pressing ctrl c and let's paste the line which we have copied and press enter Now this has been installed okay now let's go back to the documentation and inside customization if i click on overview so theming lets you apply a consistent store to your app so first step is that we need to use theme provider okay so this is the first step we need to use theme provider so first step is that we need to use theme provider component so if we look at the first component source code so here is the theme provider okay so here is the theme provider which we need to import from material ui slash course slash styles okay then we need to wrap the components in this theme provider and pass the theme as a prop so let's copy this line of code we don't require uh, create mi theme but we need this theme provider so let me copy this let's go to visual studio code and we need to create a new file with the name of theme.js okay so in ui component okay in components we need to create sorry in ui folder okay in ui folder we will create a new file with the name 
theme dot js okay and inside this i will paste the line of code which we have copied and we need to remove this too and only keep theme provider okay sorry we don't require this line here but we required the line of code in app.js okay because we need to wrap this two components in theme provider so i'll paste the line of code which i have copied and i remove this line of code and instead of div i will replace the div with this theme provider okay and wrap this two components in theme provider and let's save this file and now the file which we have created theme.js here we need to import something else which is create miui theme so let's so i have already copied the line let's paste it here and here we required only create miui theme okay create mui theme and here we need to write export default so first let me go to the documentation let me save this and let's go to the documentation so after importing this create mui theme in theme folder we have uh, we will be using this as a function okay so as you can see here we will be using at uh, we will be using it as a function and passing to it an object and then we are going to assign that object result to a constant named theme so what's going on here so when we create our mui theme this create an instance of the default mui theme and then essentially tells it that we want to override any of the default values with this object that we are going to pass within it then we are going to store that newly modified theme with all the override values and all of the default values that we didn't override store all of that as an object inside our theme constant then we are going to be passing this theme okay into our theme provider which then passes this styles on our application so let's go ahead and get back to the visual studio code and we have already import this uh, create mui theme and here we need to write export default create let's copy this and paste it here and inside we will take an object right now we will not fill any content in this okay we will not uh, write any css inside this so before we start filling out what we want for our theme i think we need to go and take a look at what the default theme that they are providing for us so that we know what values we are overwriting and how it is set up so let's save this file with the empty object now let's go to app.js and here we need to import theme i am writing in lower case because this is not a component from dot slash component slash ui slash theme okay let's save this and then we can pass the theme as a prop so theme equals to theme and inside the curly braces we wrote theme okay so we are passing this theme as a prop so let's save this so now we will start adding the code inside this object in the next lecture so this is it for this lecture and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and bye-bye. Hello friends, welcome back. So back at the documentation page, still under the customization tab, but now all the way down here, we need to click on default theme. It brings up the object that is the default theme provided to us by material UI. We will check everything in this object, but right now we are only interested in this object, which is called palette. The first property under the palette object is common, which is an object itself and that hold common colors that you might use throughout your application. So the main brand colors for whatever site you are working on, you can put those here so that it's easy to reference in your code all from one central location. That's why if you need to try out say a different color, gray or green, you can go ahead and just tweak that one value right here and then that will be reflected everywhere across your application. Now under the primary object, we have primary color of your application. Here if you actually just provide this main color for your primary or your secondary. Okay, so this is the main color 
of your primary and secondary material you are actually then goes and generates a light and a dark version that you can call on without having to explicitly set them this is really helpful if you just have a main color that you know you want to be using and then you can just use this to automatically create accents that you know you are going to match many material ui components actually get their default color from this primary and secondary settings so there are a lot of other options like error warning but the theme is same we have a main and a light and a dark version okay we have a main color light version dark version in the warning object same thing we have a main color light version dark version okay so you can go through all of this okay so but in this course we are mainly going to use the primary and secondary so these are the ones which are required for our course okay so you can go through the rest of it there is not much in it okay so if you can check gray there are different colors you can just go through it okay and if you go to text there's a primary secondary disable and there's a divider okay there's a background color paper default so you can just go through it so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back so back in our code editor in the terminal i will write npm start so this will start our application okay so we are going to change this color okay so going back to code editor and inside the theme.js we will open this object which we have left empty and the first property that we are going to put here is the palette and let's open up this and inside we will write common okay and let's open the curly braces so we will overwrite or actually just add some colors to that common collection and we will do that by starting off with blue and inside this we will use variable okay so let's first define the variable so we need two variables one is for blue color and one is for orange so the first uh, variable will be const shop cart blue which is going to be hash 1713 six eight okay and the second variable is const shop cart orange and the color code is e b c one zero zero let me save this it is giving some error so here it will be equal to okay and let's save this okay so now we will use this variable here inside this blue color property so to use this variable we will use template string so i'll use backtick key then a dollar sign curly braces open close and i'll paste the variable okay now we will use uh, the variable which is for orange color so i'll write orange and template string dollar sign curly braces and here we need to copy the variable name and paste it here okay so let me save this file so this color will be used in the entire application so if we want to change the blue color we only need to change the blue color here and it will be reflected everywhere else okay now i actually wanted to go ahead and add this colors to our palette as well and get material ui to generate the light and dark version so we are going to add underneath this common our primary object so primary object and let's open and close the curly braces and this is going to contain main uh, which is the same blue color so again i will use template string dollar sign curly braces open close and shop cut blue okay and then i'll use secondary color so secondary curly braces open close main and here again i will use template string dollar sign curly braces open close copy this variable and shop cut orange okay let me save this file so now uh, so now that we have this in place not only will material ui generate a light and dark variant of our main color 
that we have given to the primary and secondary secondary option within our palette but it will actually then change all of the component that gets their color from the theme to use our main color that we have provided instead of default material ui color so if i save this file and if we go to the browser so you can see so this color has changed to a different color instead of the bluish purple that we had used before so we have officially styled our first material ui component and customized this app bar to the theme that we have provided with our own custom colors so if we come over here and if we go to header.js now actually on our app bar component here we have another default property okay in our app bar component we have another default property which is called color and here we can set it to primary sorry uh, uh, we don't need to give curly braces we can write uh, in double quotes primary okay and if i save this and if i go to the browser and if i refresh nothing changes okay but if i remove this primary and if i add secondary and if i save this file and if i go to the browser now you can see this color has changed to orange color okay so now you can see how the theming system really does completely make over your entire application in a real easy to customize way okay so let's go back and change that to primary so when we say primary right here it tells material ui to look up for a primary color inside the theme.js okay which we have uh, mentioned here in the shop card blue okay so if i save this and if i go back so it will change this to a blue color which we have mentioned here okay so this is the color which we are looking here so this is the way how this theming system works in material ui so they have done a great job and if i remove the entire uh, color prop from here and if i save this so by default it is a primary color but if we want to change this color to secondary then here we need to mention color and property will be secondary okay so this is how we can do the theming in material ui and we can customize our colors okay so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next video where we will see the typography okay so this is it uh, for this video uh, till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back so in our last lecture we got our first look at the material ui theming system and how we can use the palette to manage our colors now i want you to take a look at the other part of the theme that is built-in styling and that is for styling of text using the typography component the typography component manages the styling for the text in the same way that the palette manages the styling for our color system so let's go to our documentation and inside customization in the default theme we have typography okay so let's go down and here it is typography object and here we can see there's a font size of 14 and font family is roboto so this is the base font which we can change okay and there these are the variants okay h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 h6 these are the variants of this typography and you can access them with the variant prop that I'll show you in a while. So let's go to the code editor and inside header.js, we need to import typography, okay? So here I will import typography. And inside this toolbar, we will wrap this title in typography. Let's save this file. Okay, here we need to add a comma. Let's save this file. And let's put the variant, okay? Let's put the variant prop. So variant, which is going to be H3, okay? So I'm not saving the file first. Let's see in the browser. So as you can see, the text is small. The font size is too small, okay? So if I save this file, and if I go back to the browser, now you can see that this font size is much bigger than what we were having okay the font weight is also too much so if i go to the documentation 
so if i go in components and if i go to typography so in data display if i click on typography so here is the sizes okay for h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 and h6 okay so this is the size which we are getting for h3 now if i go to if i go again to customization and if i go to default theme and if i click on typography and if i click on h3 so this font weight is 400 okay uh, so what if if i want the font weight to be 300 okay so let's go to the theme.js file and after the palette is over we can uh, write typography and this is an object and inside the object we will take h3 and here we can change the font weight okay so if i change the font weight to 300 let's save this and let's go back here so now as you can see the font weight is now 300 instead of 400 so let me comment this out let's save this so you, you can see the difference now it is too bold and if i change this to 300 if i save this now you can see the font weight weight has changed to 300 okay so in this way you can change the font weight font style okay and even the font size you can change so there is another property that we have to control the styling of text with our typographic component is the color property okay so here if i give color and if i set it to primary let's say i set it to primary what happened let's see so now this uh, color is exactly same as this color so it is merged and what if if i type secondary let's say this now it is orange color okay so in this way you can handle the color also so let's remove and let's keep it as it is now it is white okay so this is how we can use typography in material ui so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back by now we should be getting pretty familiar with the material ui theming system and what the default theme provides for us but what about when you don't actually need a theme you are not trying to change all of the type of components across your application but you want to apply styling to one component within your application well that is exactly what inline styling is and material ui provides a great system for doing this it ties into the theming system so let's check it out and we will use that to finally fix that margin problem with our app bar that is covering up our title hello so let's go to the documentation and inside styles and inside the basics if you scroll down and where this getting start is written here is a simple example of inline styling so it creates a little button here so let's see how it works first we need to import make styles from material ui slash codes slash styles then we need to import the button from material ui code slash button and uses that make styles import which is actually a function which we pass over styles in jss as an object and inside this object you will notice that there are a lot of these properties which are going to be extremely familiar to you because jss is essentially exactly the same as css with only a few difference but the main difference being this styles instead of being border dash radius you can see that it is border radius in camel case with the capital r so all the css property should be in this format like you see box shadow it this is also in camel case okay and another difference is that we do have to put our strings in quotation so if you just put the word white and if it is without quotation then it will give you an error so we save this make styles call with our style object here to use style constant then down here function component here we call the use style as a function since it is a hook actually which now gives us access to these styles under our class constant by the time our components are actually rendered this jss is compiled into actual css so having it here on the class constant let uh, it lets us just access this class dot root so now we understood how to set up our jss styles and then get access to them within our component let's try this out so back in our code editor so in the header.js file i mean in the header component 
at the top we need to import make styles okay so import and destruct this and here we need to write make styles from at the rate material ui styles okay and then we need to create a constant u style okay so so about this header function here we need to write const u styles which is equal to make styles and here we will use a slightly different syntax than the documentation example which is going to give us access to the theme inside of our styles we need a property from the theme to fix our problem with the header sitting on the top of our hello text so here we will pull out the theme so here we need to pull out the theme so theme and then we begin with an arrow function and the, then a parenthesis and inside we will put an object and the first style that i want to create is i am going to call the class toolbar sorry tool bar margin equal to and curly braces open close and here we need to use the spread operator to copy over some properties out of our theme the property that we want specifically is theme dot mixing dot toolbar to show you what's that doing here let's actually go to the documentation and inside customization if you go to default theme so here is the mixing object and inside this mixing object we have a toolbar object and inside toolbar object we have minimum height which is 56 and there are a couple of media queries with different heights so by using the spread operator we have now copied all the styles over to where we can now apply them to a component now let's go back to the code and first we need to come right beneath the header function about the return statement and create our const classes which is equal to calling our u style hook so here we need to write u styles so this now gives us access to the toolbar margin style on our classes constant so right below the uh, elevation scroll we will add a div with a class name which is going to be classes dot toolbar margin now what the div with the toolbar margin class is doing sorry let me close this div and let's save this so now what the div with the toolbar margin class is doing which is provided from material ui they gives us that toolbar mixing so that we can solve this exact problem this contain the height of our app bar and when we apply it to the div what it does it creates a little cushion under the app bar since the app bar is floating fix in place at the top of the screen and then pushes the hidden content underneath it out to where it can be seen on the screen if we save this and if you go back to the browser and if i go to the application if i refresh okay i'm getting some error toolbar margin okay let me check toolbar margin uh, okay let's go to the visual studio code and here i had a spelling mistake it is toolbar okay let me save this and if i go to the browser and if i go to the application if i refresh toolbar of undefined theme dot mixing okay this is mix ins okay so let's go to visual studio it is mixings we need to put, put s okay let me save this and let's go to the browser now you can see we got hello okay so if i go back here and if i go to app okay this let me remove this okay so in the app we were having hello so now this is pushing this uh, content which was underneath this app bar so with the help of this uh, with the help of this toolbar margin we have fixed the issue of this content okay this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back in this lecture we are going to implement product list First, we need to create data.json in the source folder. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. And in the source folder, we need to right click and create a new folder with the name. Sorry, we need to create a new file. So right click new file data.json and press enter. So here we will create some sample products. So 
this will be an object and inside the object we will take products and this products will be an array and inside the array we will take the objects okay so the first one is id so underscore id which is going to be dress one okay then we need title so the title will be again press one then we need image okay so image which is going to be slash images slash dress one dot jpg then we need description which is going to be about dress one here we are getting some issue so i'll put it double quotes then we have price which is going to be 19 dollars okay then we have available sizes this is the last one and this will be an array okay so and inside the array we we'll, we will have excel and second one is xxl okay double xl let me save this so this product is available only for two sizes one is excel and the second is double xl okay i have created a sample data for six product okay so let me uh, copy the sample data so this is the sample data which i have created so i'll copy this you can get this data from the project and resources tab you can download the data.json file and you can uh, use that okay so what i'm going to do is i'll paste it here so this is the this is the final data which we have okay so let me save this data.json file and then uh, again same thing for images uh, we need to create a folder in the public folder so let's create a new folder with the name images and inside this images i will paste all the files okay so these are all the images so let me just copy this again you will get all this images from pro project and resource tab okay so i'll i have copied this uh, images and i'll go here in the folder public images and i'll paste it okay let me close this close this close this and let's go to visual studio code and inside this here are the images which are which we are going to use okay so you will get it in project and resource tab so no need to worry okay let me close this and now we need to import this data in app.js okay so here we need to import data from dot slash data.json and now we will convert this app component into a class based component this is a functional component but we will be converting this into a class based component for that first we will import react component from react okay and this we need to add class app and we need to remove this here we need to write extends react okay and here we need to write uh, render and inside render we will add this return so let me save this and now we have converted the functional component into a class based component and here we need the constructor so inside this we will add constructor and it will uh, take props okay it will take one argument as props and here we will take super and inside we'll add props and here we will add this dot state which is going to be products and product will be data dot products okay the second one is size which is going to be empty then we have sort which is going to be empty again okay so now we need to pass this product as props 
in our product component. So we need to create a product component and there we will create the list of products. Okay. So now we will create a product component and in that we will add the product list. Okay. From uh, and we will pass the data of products as a props. So for that we need to uh, right click on this component folder and create a new folder and name it as products. And inside this product, I will create a new file with the name products.js. Okay. And this will be a functional component. So I will write RAFCE. Okay. And press tab. So here I will write product list. Okay. Let me save this. And inside this app.js, I will import this component. So import product. And if I click here, okay, let me, let's do one thing. Uh, here we need the product component after the header. So here I will write product. And if I click here, you can see this product uh, path has been imported automatically. So we don't have to remember the path. So let me close this. And if I save this file, and if I go back to the browser, and if I refresh, okay, I'm getting some issue. Cla class app extends React. So in app.js, this class component is giving me some issue. So, so let's go to Visual Studio Code and here we need to write components, okay? Let me save this. And now if I go to the browser and if I refresh, I think this is component. Okay. and let's refresh okay so here we are getting product list just ignore this footer for uh, for time being now after this product uh, we need cart items like this okay so this is the uh, project which we are going to build okay so here are the products and this is the cart item so we need two sections so we will divide this in two sections with the help of grid so if i go to material ui and if i write grid so you, we need to use this grid system for separating two uh, columns. So here are the options, okay? So here is the option, so grid container, and then we can uh, add the props, okay? There are different kind of, let's see this one. Grid containers, we need to add a spacing, then grid container item, and if, if we want to use nine columns, then we, this is the 12 column grid, okay? So we want nine column and three columns. So what I can do is like, if I go to Visual Studio Code and in app.js, I will import uh, here, I will import grid from at the rate materials UI code, okay? Let me save this and if I come here down, let's add the grid then container and let me close this and inside this we will add one more grid item equals to uh, sorry excess equals to three uh, sorry nine column first one is nine column sorry this is not self close and here we need to add the products let me remove the space and the second grid is equals to three columns so nine plus three twelve okay so let me close this grid and here we need cart items let me save this and if we go to the browser and let's check this out so if i refresh here you can see product list and this is cart item okay so we have a product list here and we have a cart items here so we have separated this two in two separate columns okay and let me uh, make this small because here as you can see this is small so we need to make this small so let's go to visual studio code header.js and here the variant i'll give h5 okay let me save this let's go to the browser and as you can see now this is smaller and looking much better and here in team.js we don't require this typography so i'm just removing this okay Let's see this. Let's go back to app.js. So this 
part is done of uh, the product now we need to pass this product as a prop okay so here i will take products equals to products let me save this now as a prop we need this in product.js so here here i will destruct the prop which is products okay now here we need to show the list again i will use the grid system for this okay so this is going to be a lengthy lecture and we need to use make style for the inline styling as i have shown in the earlier lectures so oh, let me import make style from at the rate material ui styles okay and then i will import grid from material ui code okay let me save this and then here we need to write const u styles which is equal to make styles and inside this we will take an object and here we will write all the css okay but right now i'm keeping it empty let's uh, come back here and here we need to write const classes equals to use styles okay so now we can use this classes now let me remove this product list and here uh, i'll take a grid container and inside this i will map the product so products dot map and inside this i will take variable product and here we need an arrow function parentheses and inside i'll take grid item and i'll take md equals to four okay and we need key which is going to be product dot underscore id let me close this grid item and inside i will take an a tag with a class name which is going to be classes dot link okay we need to create this class link okay that will create now let's keep as it is and then here we need to write href which is going to be hash plus product dot underscore id let's close this and inside this we will take card media okay so let's check what is card media card okay, let's check the card component so here as you can see we have simple card outline card okay this is the complex this is the card card media which we are going to use so as you can see this is the card card action card media so this we need card media okay so i am going to use this because uh, we want to show the image okay as you can see here here we want to show the image so i am using card media for that so let's go back to the uh, visual studio code and here we need card media so first we need to import card media then we need there are few more things which we require so let me import everything we need typography we need card action okay we need card actions then we need button okay these are the few things which we require so let's use one by one so here i i required card media and inside we need class name classes dot media okay this we need to create this class we need to create then we need image which is going to be product dot image okay then we need alt tag which is going to be product dot title then we need title which is going to be product dot title again let's close this and let's save this here it is giving me some error products is not defined in app.js so let's go to products 
okay let's check it uh, later on first we'll complete this okay so now this card media is done now we need card action okay so after the eight tag we required card actions and inside this we required typography with the class name which is going to be price classes dot price okay and component is div okay this i'll explain you and inside this we will add product dot price okay then after typography we need button so button and here we need to write add to cart and inside button we will add class name which is going to be sorry we don't name class we don't require class name we required variant which is going to be contain and size is going to be large and color property will be secondary okay let me save this so we have map everything and now we will add some classes but before that uh, let's check the error which we are getting so i'll just check this error in app.js products is not defined let's go to app.js products is not defined so i did a mistake uh, this should be this dot state dot products okay because so here we have mentioned that this dot state and the product okay so now we have passed this as a prop and now if i go to the browser and if i refresh so as you can see we got button uh, we got the price but we are not getting the image so let's go and check what is the issue so card media is fine product dot image data dot is product dot image okay product dot image this is perfect image okay so we need to add some classes uh, otherwise we won't be able to see so this is the media class so let's copy this and inside this object we will add the class media curly braces open close and we need to give a height which is going to be 500 and width which is going to be 100 percent okay let me save this and if i go browser now you can see we got the images and now there are few more okay so here we are not getting the space so here i'm going to add an inline style which is going to be padding which is 12 okay let me save this let's go back so we had we got the padding here but still we are not getting the space like this okay so we need this space so after the container we need to add spacing which is going to be three okay let me save this and now we got the spacing like this okay so this is done perfectly and now as you can see uh, we before the price we have a dollar sign so we need to work on this so here the price uh, before the price we need to add a dollar sign so for that we need to create a file in the source folder with the name utils okay util.js and here we need to add some code so i'm going to use intl number so if i go to a browser intl number format okay so if you can see this is a uh, this helps to convert the currency of uh, like we we can add a currency whatever we want like uh, euro or indian uh, inr or maybe a dollar so for that i will write some code here so here we need to write export const format price okay this is the name of the const which is going to be an arrow function so here we need to pass a variable with the name price and here in the arrow function we will write new intl dot number format okay if i go to the here you can see new intl format number format and inside parentheses we will write en 
means English. Okay, and here we need to add comma, and here in curly braces we need to write style, which is going to be currency. And the second one is currency, which is going to be USD. Okay. And here we need to write format price okay the variable which we have passed let me save this now we need to import this format price inside this product.js okay so here i'm going to import format price from dot okay dot slash so here it is not giving me an option dot dot slash okay dot slash it is outside okay so here it is and we need to wrap the price in with this variable okay so let me copy this i'll paste it here and this i will wrap it in a round brackets let's save this and if I go to the browser and if I go to the app, so here as you can see, we got a dollar sign before the price. Now, what we can do is like we will increase the font size of this. So, we are not getting the title actually. So, this is the title. So, we need this title. Okay. So, what is the issue with this title? Product.price. Okay. We have not added the title. That is the reason we are not getting it. So here inside this, we need to add typography. And variant is H6, okay. Color is primary. And component is P. I'll show you this component, okay. So let me finish this. And here we need to write product dot title let me save this and if i go to the browser now as you can see we got this title now we need to do some styling for this so let's add some styling so here is the link so first we will do some styling with the for the link so link and this will be color white okay and then the next one is price okay so we have add the class for price yes one second this is the class for price let me paste it and here i will write font size which is going to be 1.25 rem and margin right will be 10 px okay let me save this let's go back so now as you can see we got the styling as it is here okay so we have successfully added the style and all. So I wanted to show you uh, this component P. So if I go to title and if I right click and if I inspect and if you click here, okay. So here, as you can see, this is a P tag. This is inside a P tag and here the variant is H6. So if I change this to div tag and if I save this, now this will change to a div tag as you can see this is now a div tag so if you want uh, this title to be in a div tag or p tag then you can write a component div if i remove this okay if i remove this and if i save this now this title will be in h6 okay so now as you can see this title is in h6 now that there is no p tag there is no div tag but if you want this to be in a div tag or p tag or span tag then we, we we need to write this component equals to and the name of the tag okay so we have successfully uh, added all this images and we have done the styling for this so the product listing part is done uh, i hope you understood uh, all of the code which we have written if not then please go through the entire lecture again and do step by step okay do it step by step so this is it for this video and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and bye-bye. Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to add a filter bar in the shopping cart. So let me show you how the filter bar will look like. So the filter bar will look like this, okay? So this is the finished project, okay? 
So the filter bar will look like this. So we need to create a filter bar in our project. So let, for that, let's go to Visual Studio Code and in Components folder, okay, here we need to create a new folder with the name filter. And inside this folder, we'll create a new file with the name filter.js. And again, this, is, this will be a functional component. So RAFCE, press tab. Here I'll write filter, okay. Let me save this and let's go to app.js and we need to import this filter component. So above the product component, we will add filter component. So it did not give me an option. So let's import it. So filter from dot slash component slash filter slash filter. Okay. Let me save this and let's go to the browser and check. So here is the filter uh, text, okay? So here we need to add these three sections. So we will be using a grid system to add these three columns, okay? So for that, we need to go to Visual Studio Code and here, let me close this, okay? In the filter.js, uh, here I'll add a grid. So for that, we need to import grid from at the rate material slash UI slash at the rate material and UI slash code. Okay, let me save this and here. I will add grid container and and inside grid container I will add three grids okay grid item and let's take medium device four okay we need uh, three grids so this was the first one and here I want the count, okay? So let's first add the text. Let me save this. And here, there'll be a second grid. So grid items, okay, sorry. Here I have add items from medium device four. Let's close this grid. Save this. And here, uh, there'll be an option of sorting, no? sorting and the third grid is for size so grid medium device four this will be size okay let me save this and if i go to the browser so here as you can see count sort and size okay we have divided into three sections count sort and size and then uh, we need to go to app.js and here we need to pass a uh, few properties in filter component so first one is count which is going to be this dot state dot products dot length okay let me save this and if I go to filter, here we need to destruct the count prop, the count. And here I write count products. Let me save this. And if I go to the browser, you can see it shows six products because so there are six products in the array. So that is why it is showing me six products. Okay. And here we need to do some styling. Okay. So I'll add some styling. I'll take typography. So typography. Invariant, I will take as body one, okay. And I'll add a class name, which is going to be classes dot product count, okay. This we need to add, okay. We need to import make styles from material UI code styles, okay. So that we will do in a while, okay. And here I need to close this typography, and here I will close the typography okay 
so let's import typography and then we need to okay let's save this and let's check it in the browser how it looks okay classes let's import the make style okay so import make style from at the rate material ui slash coat slash styles okay let's save this one second let me go to make style because i need the path okay so let me copy this here there was a mistake okay let me save this now here i will declare a const use styles equals to make styles and inside here i'll take an arrow function and i'll pass theme and here we will add the uh, and inside this object we will add the css classes like product count and all so let me save this and for now let's keep as it is let me check the product component because okay filter let's check app okay here we need a parenthesis okay so let's go back and here i will add the parenthesis okay inside this we will add an object so so let's keep as it is and then we will add this classes okay first we will complete this section okay so now uh, what is the next thing let's check it in our browser classes is not okay here one more thing we need to do here we need to take const classes which is going to be use styles okay let's save this and now let's go to the browser now as you can see uh, we got the typography uh, as a roboto font okay and the font is looking much better okay so here in the div we will add an inline style which is going to be padding 12 okay let's save this okay now it is aligned with this image so this we have finished now we will work on the sort grid okay we will work on this here i will i need form control so form control here i will add a class name which is going to be classes dot form control okay form control need to close this And inside this form control, we will take input label. So input label. Okay, we need to import all this uh, form control input label from a material UI code. Okay, so that will do. But first, let me finish this off. And we need to close this. Input label will be select size. Okay, let's save this and let's, okay form control let's copy this let's import input label also let's save this and let's go to the browser now as you can see we got this but still we need to work on this we need options okay for options we we are going to use menu item and after this we need select okay select and inside select we need menu items so menu items items and the value will be first first value will be empty and here we need to write latest let's close this menu item and we need two more so i'll duplicate this here latest and then we need lowest the value will be lowest and here it will be highest okay and the value will be highest and let's import the select 
So here I'll paste it and then we need a new item. So let me click copy this, paste it, save this. And now let's go to the browser, refresh it. Okay, we are getting it, but we need to do some styling. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some styling for this product count and form control. Okay, so first we'll do, do it for form control. Form control and open and close curly braces. We will add margin, which is going to be theme dot spacing. And it will be one, okay? One from each side, from top right, bottom left, okay? And then we need minimum width. So minimum width, which is going to be 120, okay? Let's save this. And this spacing one means what? I'll show you once again. Let me refresh this. Now we are getting, okay? This will this won't work now, but uh, we have done the styling for this. So what is uh, spacing? Okay. So if I write spacing, and if I go here, so as you can see, uh, two means eight multiplied by two. So by default, if it is one, then it will add eight pixels. Okay. So what we have done is we have added a margin of eight pixels on each side, like from top left, bottom right. Okay. And we have given a minimum width. Uh, of 120 for this. So this is 120 pixels. So in this way, we have uh, styled this select option. Now we will style the size, okay? So for that, um, okay, we need to add one more grid. Okay, we have added the grid, but we need to add this form control and everything. So let's do it, add the form control. And again, the class, name will be classes dot form control okay let's close this and inside we need input label and input label will be select size okay so select size let's close this save this and then we need this so let's let's copy and i'll change everything so after input label i'll paste this so here the value will be changed so all and this will be xs okay xs and this value will be small, small, and we need few more. So small, then medium, large, Excel, double Excel. This is medium. This is large. This is Excel. And this is double Excel. Let's save this. And if I go to the browser, okay, now you can see the sizes. So this won't work now. Okay, we need to add the functionality for this. Okay, this is select size, select size. Okay, select size. So what should be select size? What is this? Okay, so this is order, I think so, order, okay. So this is order. And this is select size. Okay, let's go to the browser. Okay, now this is looking much better. And here we need to add CSS for this. So we have wrote this class name. So product count, which is going to be margin theme dot spacing. And from top, it will be two, like 16 pixels, then zero, zero. Zero. Let me save this. Okay. And here, one more thing we need to add is in the grid. In this grid item, we need to add align items, which is going to be center. Okay. Let me save this. Let's go to the browser. And if I refresh. Okay. So here we need to add container. Okay. Container. If I save this, 
and if i go to the browser now as you can see uh, this is in the central line okay if i compare this now both are exactly the same as we were not adding the container that's why this align item center was not working okay so once we add this container then this align item center worked okay so i think we have uh, done the styling for this now let's work on the functionality okay because uh, we need to add some functionality for this once we select the lowest it should be uh, it, the shorting should be according to the lowest price okay right now it is not working but let's go to visual studio code and now uh, we need to go to app.js and we need to pass few more uh, props in filter so first we will pass size which is going to be this dot state dot size okay then we need a uh, sort that is going to be this dot state dot sort then we need two functions to handle the change of size and sort okay so first one is i'll add a filter product so filter products which is going to be this dot filter products okay and then we need sort products so sort products which is going to be this dot sort products okay let me save this so this we need to pass as a props in filter component so let's go to okay first uh, what i'm going to do is before render i will add this filter products and pass a uh, event and here we need to implement the functionality okay same thing for sort products events it will be event and not events okay here we need to add the functionality so let me save this and let's go to filter component and here we need to add uh, the props which we have uh, written there in app.js so first one is size then sort then filter products then sort products okay and in select the value will be sort okay and here in select the value will be size okay and then we need on change so on change that is going to be filter products and here on change will be sort products okay let's save this and if i go to app.js i'm getting some error filter sort products okay sort product spelling is wrong sort product sort products okay so if i go to app.js and if i console dot log event dot target dot value let's see what happens uh, let me copy this and let's add it here also let's save this and if i go to the browser and if i inspect and if i go to console let's see what happens if i change this to like say lowest okay i'm getting the value and if i select any size i'm getting it okay so this is working we are getting uh, the options which we are selecting so this is working fine but now we need to add the functionality okay the real functionality so for that uh, i'll make this as an arrow function so what i'm going to do is uh, filter product this is going to be an arrow function okay here we need event dot target dot uh, sorry here i'll remove this console log and here i will add this dot set state which is having the size which is going to be event dot target dot value and the next one is product which is going to be data dot products dot filter okay so we are getting the products from this data okay and we are filtering out so we need to filter this so here i will add product and an arrow function 
and here we will sort by available size. So product dot available sizes dot index of event dot target dot value which is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Let's save this and let's go to the browser and let's check if we are getting the order or not. If it is, if we are able to sort by order on. So lowest, if I select lowest, okay, sorry, this is not the sorting one, this is the filter one. So if I select uh, excess, okay, I'm not getting anything, excess. So this is not changing. So let's go to data.json. Okay, this available sizes, spelling is correct. Let's go to app.js. It is correct data.products so here we need to add one more condition actually so let's add that condition if event dot target dot value is equal to empty string then this dot set state will be size which is going to be event dot target dot value and product products will be data start products all the products okay so now else in this else condition we will add this this dot set state okay so let's paste it save this okay i'm getting some issue product is products is not defined products sorry here we don't need uh, this curly braces okay so let's remove this and here we need the value this okay so it was a mistake let's save this now if i go to the browser and if i refresh and let's check it okay this is not changing actually so we are doing something wrong okay Okay, 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 okay. This is the filter product. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. This was the mistake. Short product. Okay. Now it will work. Let me refresh. And if I change to excess large, still not working. Let's go back to app.js. So here there is a mistake. Uh, this parenthesis should be end here, okay? So if I save this, and now if I go to the browser, and if I refresh, and if I select any size like Excel, double Excel, so there are two items, so two products, okay? And if I select, like say Excel, and there are four products, so four products, okay? And if I select large, so there are four products, okay? In medium, there are two products. In small, there are no products. Okay. Excess, there are no products. If I click all, so it will show all the products. So in this way, we have finished uh, the filtering for the sizes. Now we will do the sorting thing. Okay. The lowest, if I select the lowest, then the, all the products which are in the lower price should come first. Okay. And if I select the highest, then all the products which are at the high price should come first. And latest will be by the ID. Let's go to Visual Studio Code. And now we need to work on this sort product. Okay. So again, uh, this we will convert this into an arrow function. So sort product equals to event. And here, arrow function. And let's remove this console. And here we need to write this dot set state. And here we will do something different. Like we will take the first argument as state. Okay. So for that, uh, we need an arrow function. Okay. So here we will take the parameter, first parameter as state. Okay. And this state will return an object. So this is returning an object, which is a new state for this object. So the sort value should be event dot target 
dot value okay and the product is very important so product which is going to be state dot product so we got the access of this product through state dot products okay state dot products so these are the filtered products and we need to apply sort on the filtered product but before that we'll check the sort here okay so let's cut this one second let me cut this and here we'll add const sort which is going to be event dot target dot value and here i like sort okay this is just a shortcut we save this so for sorting let's remove this and here we need to add this dot state dot products and to create a clone we need to write slice okay we need to use slice method and then we are going to sort so sort and here we need two arguments so a and b and in the arrow function so this sort method accept two parameters a and b and we need to compare these two parameters and return a new object to send a new object we need to check the value of sort if sort sorry we need to check the value of sort like this so sort if sort is equal to lowest then a dot price is greater than b dot price or else return one or minus one okay then we need to check sort which is equal to highest if it is highest then a dot price is less than b dot price and if this is the case then return one or else minus one and the last condition will be will be sort by id okay so so here we need to write a dot underscore id is less than b dot underscore id if this is the case then return one or else minus one okay let's save this and now let's check if it is working or not okay so let's go to the browser refresh let me select the lowest one okay it is working so now the products are coming from the lowest price and if it is the highest so it is coming from the highest price and again latest so by default it is the latest one okay if it is lowest latest highest okay so this is working fine so we have successfully completed the sorting part also so this is it for this video and i'll see in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back in this video we are going to implement card component card component will help us to show the selected item in the right side bar so when you click on add to card this product will be added to the card and the text here should be changed so if i remove this item from the cart now it is showing cart is empty so when i add items to the cart it shows the number of item in the cart let's add another item so we need to implement multiple click on add to cart so if i add multiple item for this product so let me click on add to cart so here as you can see it should increase the number of count the number of item for this product and based on it the total should change okay let me add one more time so here the total number is 3 and the total has changed to 63.60 let me add one more time so here the total will be four items and here the total will change okay so if let me click so now the items there are four items of this product and the total has changed to 78.50 okay so in this lesson we are going to implement this section so we are going to update the value here okay show the list of items in the card show the total items in the card show the total items and we will have a proceed button okay so this is the finished product this we need to implement in our project okay so here if i click nothing will happen we need to implement this in our project okay so let's go to visual studio code uh, we need to go to product.js 
and what we need to change here is the click handler for this button so here in this button i am going to add on click so on click equals to and here we need an arrow function and the name of the function is add to cart and we need to pass product as parameter okay so product let me save this and now we need to go to app.js now we need to create state for cart items and set it to empty array so in app.js here in the state we need to set cart items which is going to be empty array okay it means by default there is no item in the cart let me save this next we need to create add to cart function so before sort products i am going to define add to cart like a method function so add to cart equals to an arrow function and here i will take product as a parameter so product and inside this function first of all let's create a duplicate for cart items so const cart items equals to this dot state dot cart items dot slice so it is a clone copy of cart item inside the state okay this is the clone copy of this then it is a time to create for each over cart item so cart items dot for each and each item and for each item i'm going to check if item dot underscore id is equal to current product okay so product dot underscore id so i'll check if the item is equal to the current product that we are going to add to the cart if it is already exist okay if this already exist if this condition is true i will just update the number of count for that so item dot count plus plus okay let me save this and also i need to set a flag already in cart which is going to be true and before for each i will define a let variable so here i'll define let already in cart okay so here the spelling should be in cart okay c should be capital already in cart that is going to be false and after the for each i will check if the product so let me check if the product is already in cart or not if it is not in the cart so if this condition is true it means that i need to push this item inside the cart items okay so cart item dot push and here i'm going to use spread operator so dot 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 product product spelling is wrong so it means that instead of having product i'm going to have the field of product here and then put a comma and set the count to 1 it means that i am going to add instance of this product with count number 1 as a new item inside cart item let me save this and that's it now that i have a new item inside the cart item it's time to go for implementing the cart sidebar to implement that first of all we need to create a new component so here inside the source folder inside the component i'll create a new folder with the name cart and inside this folder i will create a new file which is cart.js and this will be a class based component so rcc and press tab let me save this so if i go to app.js so here inside this spelling is wrong so already okay i have missed the y so let me save this file and now let's go to cart.js okay so inside the render function first of all we need to check the cart item so before the return here we need to write const and we need to destruct so cart items which is going to be this dot props okay so it means that from the parent component i am getting the cart component here and here inside this diff i will check the condition set cart items so 
so if the cart items dot length is equal to zero if this is equal to zero okay if this condition is true then the cart item will be empty so here i need to write text so i'll create a div and inside this div i will write cart sorry cart item cart is empty okay and the second condition is that so here we need to add colon and the second condition is that if there is item inside this okay if there is any item inside this so let's create another div so let me copy this and here the text will be you have cart items dot length so you have this much number of item inside the cart so in the cart okay let me save this so that's the change we have made inside the cart item now let's go to app.js we need to add cart component inside the sidebar okay so here we need to add the cart component so first okay let me remove this text okay then we will add the cart component so cart and here we need to click so let me check okay we got the path okay so we don't have to write it and here we need to pass cart items as a prop so cart items equals to cart items and this cart item is coming from state okay here as you can see it is coming from state so here we need to write this dot state dot cart items and let me close this cart component and let's save this and inside the product dot js we are using add to cart okay so we need to pass it as a prop from app dot js so let's go to app dot js and inside the product component here we need to write add to cart which is going to be this dot add to cart then we need to go to add to cart function so let's go to add to cart function and here we need to set state okay this dot set state and inside this the cart item should be cart items so let's save this and now let's check it in the browser so here i'm getting some issue okay add to cart is not defined okay so here in product.js we need to pass it as a prop so here i need to write you need to destruct add to cart okay let me save this we are getting some issue okay comma okay now let's go to the browser okay so if i refresh let me remove this let's refresh and if i click on add to cart here as you can see it says you have one cart uh, you have one in the cart okay one item in the cart so let me uh, add this product you have two in the cart okay if i click here you have three in the cart so the first part is so the first part works let's go to visual studio code now let's add the styling for this okay so right now as you can see the styling is different from this okay so let's go to visual studio code and here we need to import typography from at the rate material ui code okay and here inside this div we will take typo graphy and variant will be body one and class name it's going to be classes dot cart count Okay, let's close this and here we need to cut this and here I will paste it okay let's save this and now if I go to the browser okay, classes is not defined okay so we need to add use style for this okay so as you can see uh, we are getting an error okay that classes is not defined so let's go to visual studio code and we need to use which style because uh, this is a class based component so instead of using use style we will use 
with style okay so we need to import with styles from at the rate material hyphen ui styles okay core hyphen styles let me save this and here we need to write const styles which is going to be an arrow function so we need to pass themes and inside this we will add this class okay so cart count i need to add the properties for this so let's keep it as it is let's first finish the uh, setup for this okay then inside the render function we will write const and here we need to write classes which is going to be this dot props okay and then here uh, we need to cut this export default and here we need to write export default and here we need to write styles with styles styles and then the name of the component which is cart okay so let's save this and here i will add the property for the class cart count so we need margin top 50ph okay 50 ph let's save this and now let's go to the browser let me refresh so now as you can see uh, we got the margin uh, from top which is 50 px and the styling is also added to this text okay if i click on add to cart so you have one in the cart okay you have two in the cart so i think this is perfect let's remove this div and add react fragment so uh, there is a shortcut to add react fragment we don't need to write react dot fragment instead we just remove this div and this is it okay let's save this and let's go to the browser and if i refresh okay still this is working fine and we have removed the extra div so i think uh, this part is styling part is done so now let's go to visual studio code and move ahead so now it's time to go for creating list of cart items here for that we need to go to visual studio code and inside cart.js after typography we will take a div and inside this div we will map cart items so curly braces cart items dot map and inside this map function we will take an arrow function and each item should be converted into a card so here we will take card okay and this we will import from material ui and here the key will be item dot underscore id and class name will be classes dot root okay we need to create this class root okay and we need to close this card component so this card component we need to import from material ui okay so I'll just copy this and here I will add a comma and card okay and inside this card we will take card media so card again this card media will come uh, we will uh, import from material UI so card media and class name will be classes dot cover image that is going to be item dot image title that is going to be item dot title okay let's close this card media let's save this and let's import this from material ui so card media okay it is imported so that's great okay then uh, after card media we will take a div for details okay so class name going to be classes dot details let's close this div and inside this div we will take card content so card content okay and if i click here so it will be automatically imported from material ui okay so card content equals to uh, which uh, which is going to have class name that is going to be classes dot content and inside card content we will take typography and component will be div 
variant that is going to be body one and inside this we will take item dot title let's save this and after this typography we will take one more div with a class name that is going to be classes dot price block okay we need to show the price so price block let's close this div and here we will take typography variant will be subtitle color of the text will be text secondary okay let's close this typography and inside we need item dot price and here we will show a multiplication sign and here it will be item dot count okay and this should be this price should be in uh, dollar sign so we need a dollar sign before this price for that we need to import a uh, format price from utils so import format price from dot dot slash dot dot slash utils okay util and this price should be wrapped in a format price so format price and round brackets okay then after this typography we need button so button again this will come from material ui so if i click this here you, you can see oh we got the button no okay so let's copy this button and add here okay so button and here the color of the button will be secondary variant that is going to be contain size which needs to be small and we need an on click event so on click and inside we will take an arrow function and here we need to write this dot props dot remove from cart we need to create this function and here inside uh, we need a parameter which is item okay and let's close this button okay and inside this button we will write remove let's save this and the classes which we have created like root content okay price block so we need to add some property for that so first i'll take root and here i will paste it and we need the properties of root uh, as display flex and second one is margin top I need 25 pixels from top okay let's save this display flex okay it should be in the code and here we need a semicolon sorry we need a comma not a semicolon okay then we need details and the property of details is display flex flex direction column that's it and then we need content which is going to be flex one space zero and auto then we need cover so cover that is going to be with 151 okay let's save this and here we need a comma okay so once i save this and once we go to the browser and if i refresh and if i click uh, and if i click on add to cart so here as you can see we have this item added to the cart as shown here so let me remove this and if i click on add to cart so here is the item which is added to the cart okay the styling is uh, exactly the same okay so here there is a space so let me check uh, what is the css for that price block okay 
okay so for price block we need to write item align item center so okay i have not written the css for price block so we need this display flex align item center and justify content space between so i'll write that price block so display flex align items center and then justify content space between okay, let me save this and let's go to the browser here if I refresh okay, and if I add a cart uh, add item to the cart so here is the space and everything is fine so now it is looking exactly the same so here there is a little difference okay so here if, we can, if, I, if I refresh and if I add a cart uh, add item to the cart so here the text uh, is different is looking different from here so let's go to visual studio code and this should be subtitle one okay let me save this and now if i go to the browser and if i refresh and add a item to the cart so now the text size is similar to this one so uh, this styling part is done so now let's move ahead and let's go to visual studio code now it's time to implement the remove button for remove we need to go to app.js and before the add to cart we need to create a function with the name remove for sorry from cart okay and here we need to add an arrow function so this accept this will accept the product that we are going to remove okay so here we need to write product and inside this we need to create an instance of cart item so here we need to write const so let's copy this because this will be exactly the same so i have created a cons uh, i have created an instance of cart item now we need to filter the cart item so cart items dot filter and here we need to take an arrow function here uh, we need to pass x and and we need to filter based on the id so i'll remove this curly braces we don't require this so x dot underscore id which is not equal to product dot underscore id so by this command we get rid of the current product that the user selected to remove so let's set this as a new cart item in the state so here we need to write this dot set state which is going to be cart item and this will be equal to this line of code okay let's save this so by having this code you just remove the selected item after creating this remove remove from cart function now it is time to pass it as a prop okay so let me copy this and we need to go to cart component so here we need to pass it as a prop so this dot remove from cart okay let's save this and it and in cart.js we already had a remove from cart okay so we have already written this dot this dot props dot remove cart okay so now let's save this and let's check it in the browser let me refresh it and let's add this item to the cart and if i click on remove this item will be removed okay let me remove a couple of items so this is working fine now let's implement the total count okay so here as you can see we have a total count okay this is a finished project so we need to add this total count here okay so let's go to visual studio code so we need to go to cart.js and before this div we will create a div and inside this div we need to create a one more div and here we need to write a class name which is going to be classes dot total amount okay 
and this class we we need to create at the top okay so let's close this div and inside this div we will we need a typography so typography and variant will be h6 okay let's close this and inside we need to write total now we need to add a condition that cart items dot reduce we need to use reduce function and reduce function accept two parameters accumulator and current item so we are going to sum the accumulator so here we need to write a plus and we are going to sum the accumulator by the current item so c dot price and multiplied by current item so c dot count okay and set the default value to be zero okay and and this whole thing we need to wrap it in format price so first we need to import the format okay this is imported already so let's copy this and here we need to paste it and we need to add a curly braces so let me save this file and after this typography let's create a button so button and variant is contain size equals to large color is going to be secondary and let's close this button and we will add an on click event later okay here we need to write proceed okay let's save this and let's go to the browser and check what we are getting so let me refresh okay so we are getting some error reduce of an empty error empty array with no initial value with no initial value how oh, this is possible so here there is a mistake so this should be comma and zero and i need to remove this let's save this and now let's go to the browser so now as you can see we are getting this uh, when there is no item in the cart so it should be uh, there should be a condition that if there are no item in the cart the this box should not be shown okay so for that we need to add a condition so let's go to visual studio code and before this div we need to add a condition that cart items dot length which is going to uh, which is not equal to zero if this is the case okay so if this statement is true then we need this code to be executed okay so let me cut this and let me paste it here okay let's save this and now let's go to the browser if i refresh now uh, there is no total item but when i click add to cart so now as you can see we have total item and the proceed button okay but we need this proceed button uh, on this side okay so for that i have created a class which is called total amount so let's write some css properties for this class so display flex align items center justify content space between margin top which is going to be 10 pixels okay let's save this and now let's go to the browser let me refresh and let's add to cart so now as you can see this total amount and this proceed button are side to side side by side okay so this should be actually 20 pixels so now this is perfect okay if i consider if i compare this with this so this is going to be uh, exactly the same so this is it uh, we have completed removing item from the card we have shown this text we have uh, completed this add to card functionality okay if i click here so it is going to be added in the card and the total amount is seen here so this is it for this video and i'll see in the next video till then take care and bye bye
Hello friends, welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to implement checkout form. Okay, so if I click on proceed button, so here is the checkout form. So this is the finished project. Okay, this is the same thing which we are going to implement in our project. So if I click on add to cart and if I click on proceed, nothing happens. So we need to implement a checkout form. But before that, we are going to store this item in local storage. So if I refresh this, so as you can see, the item in the cart has been removed. So we don't want that. We want something like uh, if I add to cart, this item should be remain after I refresh. Okay. So we need to store this items in the local storage. Okay. So for that, we need to go to Visual Studio Code and in app.js in add to cart function, after setting the state, here we need to write, write local storage dot set item. Okay. And this will take two fields. The first one is the key. So our key is the name of the key will be cart items and the second one is and the second value should be a string but the point is cart item is a javascript object so we we are going to use json dot stringify so this will convert javascript object into string okay and here we need to write cart items let's save this now we need to implement this same line of code and remove from cart okay so remove from cart function after setting the state here we need to paste it okay now uh, let's move up and here instead of blank array we need to remove this and here we need to write json dot parse okay this is the reverse of json dot stringify and we are going to read from local storage okay so local storage dot get item and here what would be the name of item it is the name that we have used in set item so it's going to be cart items okay let's save this by having this three simple line of codes we are able to make the cart item to be stored in local storage so let's check it in the browser so if i go in the browser okay i'm getting some error line number 19 okay here we need to check a condition so we need to check existence of this if this exists okay so let me uh, we need to copy this line and here we need to paste it and we need to check if this exists okay if this is true if this exists then we are going to use this otherwise we will show an empty array okay so now i think it will work so let's save this and now let's go to the browser okay still we are getting some error line number card items is not defined card items okay so this needs to be in double quotes or single quotes okay let's save this and now let's go to the browser and check so let me refresh and let's add this item to the card okay and now let's refresh it again so now as you can see this item is stored in our local storage let's uh, add few more items let's refresh let's remove the middle one okay so let's remove this and if i refresh oh it is not going so let's go to visual studio core so it is uh, still there okay so we need uh, to fix this so here let's copy this line of code and here instead of this we need to paste the line which we have copied because it is exactly the value i'm going to set inside the cart item so let's save this and now let's go to the browser and check if i refresh so now this item is still there and let's remove this third one okay i'm getting some error fail to execute set item on storage argument required but only one present Okay, let's uh, line number 41 so here there is some something wrong okay let me undo this okay so here so let's copy this line again and instead of cart items i'll paste this okay so now this will work fine let's go to the browser and if i refresh you can see we have uh, three items and if i remove this and if i refresh now the error is not there and these are the two items remaining okay let's remove everything refresh it 
okay now add items okay let's add this multiple times and now if i refresh it will be still there and if i remove this and if i refresh so now it is working fine so the first part is over okay now we will move ahead so let's go to visual studio code now we will implement the checkout form like this okay so if i click on proceed button so you will have a form and if i click again this form will go so this will actually toggle okay so we need this form to collect the email name and address from the user and when the user click on checkout okay so we prepare the data to save in the database but the backend part will be done in the future lessons so let's work on this form so we need to create a form in our project so if i click on proceed there will be a form like this okay so let's go to visual studio code and in card.js after this div we will take one more div let's close this div and inside we will take a form okay and this form will have an on submit okay so on submit and this will be this dot create order so this function we need to create okay but first let's uh, work on the input part okay so inside this form we will take a div and inside this div we will take input okay so let's copy this input and let's go at the top let's paste it here because we want to import this input from material ui code okay and now this input will have some properties so the first one is default value which is going to be email placeholder that is going to be email again then we have input props that is again going to be area label which is description okay so what is area label let's check this out so area label attribute is used to define string that labels the current element use it in the case where a text label is not visible on the screen so that is for the people who can't see okay so area label is for the people who are not able to see properly okay now we have a few more properties like name that is going to be email again then type should be email and we have a required okay so this field is required okay if you don't fill this form there will be an alert then we have on change that is going to be this dot handle input okay and then we have a full width okay so this is this will help us to uh, make this input as a full width okay so that is the reason we need to put full width so let's close this input and then okay but before that okay we will add more inputs but here we need to check the condition that uh, this dot state dot show checkout okay this we need to create in state if this is true then execute this div okay so let's cut this and paste it inside this let's save this and now this show checkout we need to create a state for this so we need to create a constructor constructor inside there will be props super props okay then this start state that is going to be a show checkout and initially it will be false let's save this and if i refresh this still we need to have an on click on proceed button so let's do that first here we need an, we need an on click okay so on click that is going to be an arrow function and here we need to write this dot set state and inside here we will write show sorry so show checkout 
that is going to be not show checkout means this will if this is true then if you click it will be false okay so it will toggle let me save this and let's check it out in the browser show checkout is not defined okay so this dot state dot show checkout okay so now if i click here you can see we have an input okay we have a form but there should be a margin so here i'll put style equals to margin top 20 pixels okay let's save this now if i click you can see the input okay if i click again it will go okay so this email part is done now we need uh, the rest of the input fields like name address and all and checkout button so let's do that so i'll copy this div okay and i'll paste it here again i'll paste it to uh, this two we need these are the two fields which we require so name and address so that is the reason i have pasted two times so name and address okay so your name name this will be description name type will be text okay and rest of the things are oh, correct now your address your description uh, address type will be text okay Rest all the things are correct now we need button okay for checkout button uh, and one more thing we required let's check first how does it looks so there is no gap in between okay there we need a space so for that we will add a break okay let's save this if i click on this now you can see okay now after this div also i'll add a break okay now we require button so here i'll take a div and inside i'll uh, write a line that is going to be right okay we need a we need the button on the right side and inside this div we will take button button with a variant that is contain size that is going to be large color that is going to be secondary type that is going to be submit okay and this we need to close and here we will write checkout let's save this let's check it in the browser if i refresh click so here is the checkout button okay so this is working okay now we need to create a function handle input okay so this is the handle input we need to create so let's go at the top and before this render we will add this function and here we need an arrow function inside we need event so event and here we need we need to set the state so this dot set state that is going to be event dot target dot name so here this we need to put in square brackets so square brackets and event dot target dot value okay so we are setting the state for this but we need uh, to create the state for all the input uh, names so let's do it so first one is name that is going to be empty string okay then we have email again that will be an empty string then we have addresses address that is again again going to be an empty string okay so this part is done now we need to create create order function so i'll show you where is the create order function so in the form this is the create order function so let's copy this and again after this handle input we will we need this event arrow function and here we need to set uh, prevent default so that the form does not refresh so for that event dot prevent default 
okay and here we will uh, take a variable we will uh, we will take a const order okay and this is an object so inside this object we will take name that is going to be this dot state dot name then we have email that is going to be this dot state dot email then we have uh, address that is going to be this dot state dot address and then we have cart items that is going to be this dot props dot cart items and we need to save this order okay so this dot props dot create order and here we need to pass orders order okay so let's save this so this form is not responsible for saving this but but the parent component should save this so inside we need to go to app.js so this is the parent component so here we need to uh, write the function create order so here here i'll create a create order function so create order this is a callback function so here we need to pass order and then arrow function and here i'll add an alert okay so alert will be need to save order for plus order dot name let me save this and here we need to pass this as a prop so let's go to cart component and here we'll pass it as a prop so this dot cart order let's save this let's go to the browser and check if this is working or not so let's click on pro proceed so this is toggling properly if i click on checkout this will show me an error so let's write an email test dot test dot com if i click again okay need to save order but here i should see an alert okay so if i put a name let's see test address is also test if i click need to save order for test okay once again let me check because if i click here okay this is showing me test if i click here okay the name should be there okay let's go to card.js i think we don't require this default value because of this this required is not working so let me remove this and then we will try okay so let's remove this default value now if i refresh okay now if i click okay, this please fill this form okay now email should be test at the rate test if i click it is asking me please fill this field so i'll write test then again for address test okay if i click here is the alert need to save order for test okay so this is working perfectly fine and we have uh, done the styling for that also so we have completed this checkout form uh, styling as well as the functionality uh, i hope you like this video so i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back in this lecture we are going to create a simple backend using node express and mongodb let's go to the final version of this project and if i open the console right click inspect and if i go to network tab and we need to refresh the page so inside xhr you can see we have a request and here the request has a address api slash product and here is the result it is an array of javascript object which is in json format so we are going to implement a very simple backend like this to do that we need to first install nodemon Nodemon is like Node, but the difference is it checks your code changes and when there is a change, it reruns your project. So we need to go to Visual Studio Code and we need to open a new terminal. So we need to go to terminal, click on new terminal. And here we need to write npm install Nodemon. And then we need to press enter. And after installing Nodemon, it's time to go to package.json. So let's go to package.json. And inside the script, 
and inside the script we need to add a new script so right here the name of the script will be server and the command will be nodemon server.js let me save this so it is asking me to override so let's click on override okay so now the file has been saved so whenever you run npm run server this command will run okay so this command will run so now inside the root folder okay so here where we have created a folder this is the root folder we need to create a new file and name it as server.js okay and inside this file we are going to implement backend to implement backend we need to install some libraries they are express body parser mongoose and sort id we will use express as a web server body parser to parse the data inside the post request to the server mongoose uh, it connects us to the mongodb database and sort id is like a library to create a user friendly id to save as a product id after installing nodemon it's time to install other packages to do that we need to write npm install express space body hyphen parser space mongoose space and short id and we need to press enter so once everything is installed then we need to start implementing server in server.js so now we are done with this so here first of all we need to import all the packages so the first package is express so here we need to write const express which is equal to require so we use require to import the express package okay that's it now we need to duplicate this line of code three times okay so now for body parser we will write body parser and here it will be body hyphen parser the third one is mongoose so let me copy this and paste it here and the last one is short id okay let's copy this okay let's copy this and paste it here so now the next step is to create a web server using express to run express as a function and set the result inside app variable so here we need to write const app that is equal to express okay that's it after that it's time to use body parser so we need to write app dot use body parser so now the next step is we are going to initialize mongoose database so we need to write mongoose dot connect and inside connect there are two parameters the first one is the url of connection to the mongo db database so it should be like mongo db colon slash slash and here we need to write local host slash and here we need to write the name of our database so we can keep the name as react hyphen shop hyphen cart hyphen db so as i said before there are two parameters for connect so the second parameter is a bunch of options okay so comma and here we need to have a bunch of options so the first option is going to be use new url parser okay and we need to set it to true the second one is use create index and we need to set it to true and the last one is use unified okay use unified topology sorry here we, we need to write through okay for the mistake and the third one is and the last one is used unified topology and we need to set it to true okay let's save this so we just connected to mongodb at this point and it's time to define the first endpoint so it should be like app 
dot get and inside this we will write slash api slash products and then we need to add a comma and responder to this endpoint is going to be like this request and response and inside this body and inside the body of this function i am going to get access to the database and the table of products but before that we need to define the product model so let's keep uh, this as it is so let me save this and about this function we are going to create a product model okay so for that we need to write const product equals to mongoose dot model so mongoose dot model is responsible for creating the model and this model accept two parameter the first one is the name of the collection inside the database and the second one is the list of field of this model into the database so set the name as product okay and for the columns or field of this model it should be like new mongoose dot schema and inside mongoose dot schema what we are going to do is define a bunch of columns let's say the first one is going to be underline id and the type of it will be so let's say type of it will be short id dot generate so by having this line of code when you create a new product into the database a new id from short id dot generate function will be created and set to the ids so what will be the next field for product so you can open data.json file so let's open data.json file and here you can see the list of field like image title description available sizes and price okay so let's go to server.js and implement them okay so the first one is title so title that is going to be string okay let's duplicate this lines okay let's duplicate this particular line so one two three four okay so i need to add a comma okay so here i have done some mistakes so let me undo this uh so after this curly braces we need to add a comma and then we need to write title which is going to be string then comma okay so let's duplicate this lines so we have after title we have uh, description then we have uh, image then we have price there is one more which is available sizes so available sizes okay so price will be number and available sizes will be an array of string okay let's save this so we are done with creating product model the next step is to go inside the product products api and get the list of products from the database so it should be like this const products and to get the list of product first of all we need to access the model so product dot and here we need to call a function find okay like this and the parameter is empty it means that there is no condition it means that return all products that's it okay let me save this file but the point is find is a promise so to get the real data what we need to do is uh, we we have to use the new syntax of async await okay so here i need to write async and here we need to write await and at this point we have list of product inside product variable okay we have a list of product inside the products variable and to send back to the client uh, we need to use res dot send and inside we need to write products so it's time to create a new product by having the api 
we can return the list of products, but the point is there is no product inside the database. So we need to create an endpoint to create a product. To do that, we need to write app dot post, and I'm going to use HTTP post method. Okay, so because we are going to create a product, and it should be very similar to get. Okay, so here I need to write slash API slash products. But this time it is uh, something like this, okay? Async and this, sorry, re required, so okay, comma, this, and an arrow function. And at this point, we need to create a new product. So const new product, which is going to be new product. And the parameter that goes in it will be rick dot body. So when I'm sending the request from front end to this endpoint, we need to fill rick dot body with the data of the new product. After creating the new product, it's time to save that into a database. Okay. So we need to write const saved product. equals to await new product dot save okay let's save this file and at the end we need to write this dot send and inside we need to write saved product okay let's save this okay this should be outside this function okay so let's remove this and here we need to paste it okay so this is something different from this okay this is a get request and this is a put post request let me save this by having this three line of code okay by having this three lines of code we were able to create a new product inside the database so the last step to create the express server is to listen to the port and launch the server first of all let's define the port okay so const port and the port number comes from process dot env dot port. It is a special variable that set the port number, but if it does not exist, then I will use the default port number. So, so if it does not exist, then we need to use a default port number, which is 5000. Okay. And at the end app dot listen. and listen to the port okay if it goes well so if it goes well then we are going to console log so console log server at http colon slash slash local host colon 5000 so let's save this file so that's it by having uh, 40 lines of code okay uh, by having this 40 lines of code, we have created a very simple node express and mongodb server and by having this server we can get list of products and Okay, we can get list of product and we can create new products uh, Now let's add the last API that is going to be delete product. Okay, so here we need to write app dot delete So to delete the product we need to add this endpoint slash API slash products slash colon id it means that it is just a placeholder to get the id of the product which is going to be deleted and then async await okay so async this dot rick sorry rick and response okay required and response and then inside this function we are going to delete the product here so i'm going to define delete product so const deleted product that is equal to await and i am going to use function that comes from product model so product dot find by id and delete okay and the parameter goes inside is 
rict dot params dot id so this id is exactly the value which the user enters right here okay so by deleting the product it's time to return a result to the user so here we need to write risk dot send deleted product let's save this so far we have created the server and now it's time to install mongodb so to install the mongodb we need to go to mongodb.com and once you are on mongodb.com you need to scroll down and here we need to click on installation okay so in my previous lectures i have told you uh, i'll show you how to install mongodb on uh, mac if you are a windows user you just need to click on uh, okay let's click on install mongodb community edition so if you are if you are a windows user you just need to click on this and uh, there are instructions you need to follow that because i don't have windows so i'll not be able to show you i have mac so i'll click on mac os okay so we will install using homebrew so in, first you need to have homebrew on your machine so i've already installed homebrew but if you don't have so this is the link so just open it in a new tab and you just need to copy this okay and you need to go to your terminal and you need to paste the link which you have copied and it will ask you the password so just enter the password and it will uh, get installed okay i'm just closing it because i have already installed it so once the home view is installed then you need to follow a few steps which are very simple again we need to go to terminal okay and we need to copy this a brew tap mongodb slash brew okay so I have done this, uh, I have already done this, so, but still I'll just try if I'm able to install MongoDB again. So this will update, okay, this is updating Homebrew. Okay, so this is the first step. First step is installing Homebrew. Second step is to uh, install this brew tap MongoDB slash brew. Okay, uh, now, now we need to copy this line, okay, brew install MongoDB 4.4, okay. So this I have already done, but still, let me try it. Okay, to reinstall run. Okay, so I don't want to reinstall because I have already installed it. These are the two steps. And if you want to check uh, whether MongoDB is installed or not, so you just need to first, let me clear this. And you just need to write MongoD, okay? And press enter. So you will get something like this, okay? So it means that uh, you have MongoDB in your machine, okay? So this is something which says that MongoDB is installed in your machine. So this is done. Let me close this. So the installation part of MongoDB is done. Now uh, we will be able to run this code, okay? Uh, we are able to run this code once the MongoDB is installed. But for to run this code, we need Postman, okay? So that also I have already installed in my machine. So post first, uh, so you need to go to postman.com. Okay. Slash download. Okay. So you need, you need to go to this URL. So you need to click on this, download the app. Okay. And you need to install Postman. So I have already done it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to open Postman. Okay. So after the installation, we need to open Postman. And here we will check all the endpoints, okay? So we will check all these three endpoints, okay? We need to test all these endpoints. So let's start with the first one, okay? which is uh, slash API slash products, okay? So, but you don't forget to add the prefix, which is this one, HTTP colon uh, slash slash localhost 5000, okay? So let me copy this, uh, but before testing, we need to run the server, okay? So as you, so in the package.json we have added this script nodemon server.js so we need to run okay so npm run server we need to type this line and press enter okay it is giving me some error so let me check what is the error here i think there is an issue type string uh, type should be string and i'll set the default value as short id dot generate okay let me save this and let's run the server again so npm run server it is still giving me an error so let me try it again npm run server 
still it is giving me some issue command not found Mudimon server.js. So there is one more issue uh, in on line number eight. Body parcel is an object, but I'm going to call the JSON function uh, of this object. So here we need to write uh, dot JSON. Okay, so we need to call this uh, JSON. It means that when a new request comes into the into the server, it uh, treat the body as JSON and interpret that as a JSON content. So OK, so now let's save this and. Uh, now let's try it again. OK, so npm run server. Still, it is giving me an error, so let me do npm install. OK, I don't know what is the issue. So npm start OK. So now our project is getting started. OK, I think this was the issue. Mm, would you like to run? OK, it is already running. Uh, something is already running on port 3000. OK, so let me check what is running on port 3000. Okay, it is already running. OK, so I'll say no. I'll say npm run server. Still, we, we are getting some issue. We have already installed Nodemon, so let me see. Let's copy this. And let's uh, install once again, OK? So OK, npm install hyphen g Nodemon. Let's try it out. npm run server. No, we are getting some issue. Nodemon command not found. Okay, server nodemon server.js server.js server.js. So I just search it on net and uh, I search, just search it on internet. So I'm getting some uh, solutions for this. So let's try this out. Let's copy this and let's go to Visual Studio Code and let me paste and press enter. Let's see uh, if this works uh, because I don't know what is the issue because the coding part is uh, correct. Mm, the operation was rejected. I don't know what is the issue. Let's run the code again. npm run server. So let's copy this. OK, sudo npm install hyphen g as does post node one. So let me try this out if it is if, if it works. I need to enter my password. Now let's start npm run server. OK, now it is working. OK, uh, so if we face the problem which we were facing, then just uh, copy this line of code, uh, which we, which I have copied. And uh, or maybe you can just go, go to this URL <laughs> or just type the, this line. OK, and so this uh, will uh, start the server. OK, so, so we have successfully started the server. OK. And I have shown you two things. OK, first the issue was with. Uh, OK, and here uh, there was a. Round bracket, so I have removed it because we don't require that. And uh, here I have added type string and default will be short ID dot generate. OK, this was one change. And the second change was this body parser dot JSON. OK, so let me save this and now we need to go to postman. And. Uh, let me delete this because I was just testing it out. So let's delete everything. And if you come to Postman, you need to click on plus icon. OK, then you need to copy this line. OK, uh, this you need to copy this line. You need to paste it, then slash API slash uh, products. OK, and this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Slash products. And then you need to click on send. So once you click on send, you will 
get an empty array. So this is working perfectly fine. Now we need to test this endpoint, which is uh, we need to add a product. So this was get. Now we need post. Okay. So again, we need to click on plus, and again we need to paste the same line. And here we required is post, and again slash API slash products. Okay. And we need to go to body, then draw, and in the drop down we need to select JSON. Okay. Then uh, here we need to go to data.json and we need to copy this entire code and we need to paste it and we need to remove the ID. We don't require the ID because we are creating the ID automatically by using a short ID. Okay, so this is it and then we need to click on send. So now uh, the data has been uh, added. This product has been added to the database and if you want to check you just need to go to the get URL and See now it is empty here as, as you can see this is empty but when I click on send you will see the data okay. So this product has been added successfully to S1. Now again we have to do the same thing for all the six products all the remaining five products. So what we need to do is we need to copy this okay one by one we need to copy. And again we need to go to post just delete this paste it out remove the ID and click on send. So again, this will be added. Again, we need to fetch. OK, uh, we need to get the data. So these are the two products. Then again, for the third one, we need to go here, copy this. Just delete this, paste it. We need to remove the ID. OK, don't forget to remove the ID. Send. Again, here we need to get the data. So click on send. OK. This was the third item. Now the fourth one. So let's do it all the six. Okay. So again, here we need to delete, paste, remove the ID, send. Here we need to click on send again. Okay. Again, this one is the fifth one. Delete, paste it, remove the ID, click on send. Go to get and click send. Okay. Now the last one. Press number six. Copy this. Go to the post request. Click on it. A paste here. Remove the ID. Send. And here also click on send. So as you can see, now we will have six products. Okay. This one was first one, second product, third product, fourth product, fifth, and sixth. Okay. Sorry. This was the sixth product. So uh, we have successfully added all the six products inside this endpoint. So we are ready to use this endpoint inside the React application by running this address using Ajax library like to fetch Axios or others. So now to test the delete. Okay. So now we need to test the delete. Okay. So this one we need to test. For that we need to go to Postman again. Click on plus icon, and we need to select. Uh, Delete, paste. Oh, sorry. Uh, we need to copy this URL. Okay, slash API slash products and slash. We need to. Uh, okay, first we need. We will. What we'll do is we will add a, a seventh product and we'll we'll try to delete that. Okay, so let me copy this, remove this, uh, and here just. Uh, one second. We'll do what we'll do is press seven. Okay. This is not there in the file, but we are just creating a dummy one. So let uh, let's add this seventh one. And here we just uh, click on send. So the seventh pro product, the seventh one is also added. So this is the first one, second one, third one, fourth. Fifth, sixth, and this is the seventh one. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to copy this ID. Okay, we need to go here. Okay, we need to paste the ID which we want to delete. So let's remove this API product. Product we don't require this because here, okay, we required, we required. Okay, because see API product and then the ID. Okay, so now uh, let's try to delete. Okay, so if I click on send now. 
it says that this product has been deleted okay so here you can see and now if i go here and let's check if it is deleted or not so if i click on send now we have one press one press two three four five six okay and the seventh one is deleted so this delete api is also working okay so this is it for this video uh, i hope you like this video and this is a lengthy one so if you don't understand anything please watch it again because this is super important video okay so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back in this video we are going to implement redux as a part of this tutorial so what we are going to do is we'll get the list of products from the server which we have just implemented in the previous lecture but this time the data should come from a redux store so to implement that first of all we need to install redux react redux and redux thunk by having these three packages we are able to apply redux to our react application so inside the terminal first we need to stop the terminal and inside this we need to write npm install redux react redux and redux thunk and press enter So after installing this, it's time to create types. Means we need to create action and each action has a type. So here in the source folder, we need to right click and create a new file and name it as types.js and press enter, okay? Let me close this and let me minimize this. And here we need to write export const fetch underscore products and we need to set it to fetch underscore products let's save this and now we need to create a folder called actions and inside that we are going to implement actions for product okay so right click on source folder and here we need to select new folder and name it as actions and inside this action folder we will create a new file with the name product actions.js and inside product actions.js we are going to write export function sorry export const okay we are going to export functions and this function we are going to name it as fetch product and this function accept no parameter because we are not going to filter the products we are going to get the list of all products so it should be empty and it should return a new function which is like this okay and that accepts a parameter called dispatch and this function body okay this function body is going to be like this and here we need to dispatch an action in this function first of all we need to get the data from the server so we need to write fetch and inside this we are going to write slash api slash products and i'm going to use async await style so set this function and set this function to be async and set this fetch to await and set the result inside rest okay so const test that is going to be await fetch and the api products okay const so here i need to write s okay const and it's time to get rest dot data which contains the list of product and dispatch that as an action so it's going to be like it's going to be like this dispatch and inside this there will be an object and this object contains two value the first one is type which is gonna be of types fetch 
products okay we need to click here so that we can import fetch product from types okay then the second value is payload and the payload is going to be res dot data okay let's save this now it's time to create a reducer so right click on source folder and create a new folder with the name reducer okay reducers and inside reducers we need to right click and click on new file and name the file as product reducer dot js okay product reducers dot js and i'm going to define a function that is const products reducers okay product reducer and it will have two parameters the first one is the current state and the second one is the action so current state i will set it to an empty object okay by default and for action and for action i set the action like this okay and inside this function we are going to use switch case and inside the switch case the value we are going to evaluate is action dot type so inside here in this case part if the action dot type is fetch product okay so let me write case and if the action dot type is fetch product so here we need to write so we need to import fetch product from dot dot slash types okay dot dot slash types okay so we have imported this fetch product so if the action dot type is fetch product so what i'm going to do is to set action dot payload inside the state so i'm just going to return the new state item so item that is gonna be action dot payload and for default case let's return state and we need to export this function so export const product reducer okay so by having this simple reducer when i get a new data from the action i update those data inside the redux store okay so let me save this file now it's time to create store for that we need to go to the source folder and right click and create new file and the name of the file will be store.js and inside store.js we will import create store and apply middleware from redux and now it's time to import thunk so import thunk from redux thunk and we also need to import combined reducer so combine reducers okay from redux now we need to define initial state so const initial state equals to an empty object and then create the store itself so const store equals to create store and create store accepts multiple parameters okay so the first one is reducer so i'm going to use combine reducers and inside combine reducer i want to combine all the reducers okay that i have in this case i just have one reducer and it is product reducer so i just need to write products equals to product reducer and we need to import product reducer from reducer slash product reducer okay it is uh, imported here okay so make sure that it is imported from uh, reducers slash product reducers and it should be inside curly braces because this is not a default export and the second parameter of create store is initial state so initial state okay 
and the last parameter is middleware we are going to use redux thunk middleware because inside our action okay because inside our action because inside our action we are sending a sync request to the server to get the data so that's why we have to use redux thunk to handle this type of action okay so to use so to use apply middleware first of all we need to import compose function so here we need to uh, import compose and now we need to use compose function to compose all the middleware together the other middleware we are going to use along with the redux tongue is redux dev tools from chrome for chrome to use that i will just define const compose enhancer equals to window dot underscore underscore redux underscore dev tools underscore extension underscore compose underscore underscore okay if this exists then i'm going to use this or else so I'll write a condition or or else I will use the default compose function. So compose. OK, let me save this. So by having this line of code, I can send all information about the Redux store to Chrome Redux Dev Tools and I can monitor whatever happens here, including action state and any other data. For the third parameter of create store, I am going to use compose and answer and inside that i'll just use apply middleware then i'm going to use thunk okay and at the end don't forget to export okay so export default store so let's save this so here i'm getting some error let's see compose and answer apply middleware thunk so here this closing should be after this okay so this is the first parameter comma this is the second parameter and this is the third one so that's it okay let me remove this if i save okay this is well, this should be a semicolon and here we need to add a comma so here we need to add a round bracket so okay? this is the opening closing and here okay so this is the opening and closing for tongue so let me save this file so by having this few lines of code i just created a redux store okay so let's move ahead now it's time to use store we need to go to app.js and import store there and wrap all the components inside provider so let's go to app.js and then import store from store okay so import store from dot slash store okay and we are going to use store inside the render function so so inside the render function we are going to use store so we need to wrap the whole thing this theme provider from year to year we need to wrap uh, everything inside the provider okay so here we need to write provider and provider is a component from react redux okay it is a component from react Redux library and I'm using the component to wrap the whole component inside provider and provider accept a value which is store and I just set this store attribute to this store okay that comes from Redux store let's close it and let's cut this closing tag and let's paste it here okay and we need to import provider from react products library so import provider from react products okay that's it now it's time to connect product component to redux store okay to do that we need to go to product.js first let's save this file and then we need to go to product.js so inside product folder we have product.js so here we need to connect redux store okay so we need to use connect function inside this product.js okay so i'm going to use connect 
So here we need to write export default connect. Okay. And it will take two parameters. The first one is the function that accept the state. Okay. So here we need to write state and returns an object. So it will return an object that defines which part of Redux we are going to use here. So we are going to use products. So products and it's going to come from state dot products. Okay. So this is the first parameter of connect. The second parameter of connect is the list of action. So let's create an object. Okay. And the actions which we are going to use is fetch products. And the connect function itself return another function and the, and the another function accept a parameter and the parameter is the name of the component we are going to connect and the component name is product. So we need to wrap this in a round brackets. Okay. So it's fetch products. Okay. Now we need to import the connect and fetch products at the top. So let's import. Okay. So here it is. Okay. It is by mistake. Uh, it is written that import connect from mongoose. So it should be react Redux, okay, and uh, we need to import fetch products. So import fetch products from dot dot slash dot dot slash actions slash product actions, okay let's save this now let's fetch the product using use effect okay so here we need to write use effect and inside this we are going to use sorry inside this inside this we are going to use use effect and it will take an arrow function and here we need to write fetch products function okay and the second parameter is an empty array and this fetch product comes from props so here we need to destruct fetch products okay let's save this now we need to update the product.js at the very end and set the last line to state.products.items and this should be in round brackets so let's cut this and let's paste it here okay let's save this It should be something like this. So the last line should be state dot product dot items. The reason to write this is because inside product reducer, if I go to product reducer and you can see that the product reducer, we set the item variable here. Okay. So inside the component, we need to use the items to get the access to the list of products that comes from the server. Now the next step is updating package dot JSON. So let's open package dot JSON. And here we need to set a proxy. So by setting the proxy, so let's set the proxy. So here we need to set the proxy. So proxy. So by doing this, uh, we do not need to prefix the server name. Okay. In each request. So the server I'm going to use is port 5000. So it should be HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 5000 and a comma let's save this and now we need to run the server to run the server okay we need to come to the terminal and we need to write npm run server and press enter so now the server is running okay now we need to open a new terminal and here we need to write npm start and press enter So now the project is running. So we are getting some error. Does not contain a default export import. Product reducer, product reducer, which is the file reducer. Let's go in product.js. What is the issue? Attempted import error. 
do not contains a default fetch product, fetch product, fetch product. Let's go to fetch product. So we are getting some issue here. So this should be in curly braces. Okay. So let me save this. So now still we are getting some issue. Uh, React products does not contain a default export imported as provider. So let's go in app.js here. Again, we need a curly braces. So let's save this. And now we need to go to, okay, again, we are getting some issue. Import error action does not contain default export. Okay. So let's go to product.js. And here again, we need a curly braces. Okay. Now let's go to the, okay. Now the state is not defined. State is not defined. Line number four and line number 10. So here we have done a mistake. Uh, this round bracket should not come here, okay? And this should not come here, okay? Let's bring it up and then let's save this. Now it is fine. And now let's go to the browser. So here still we are getting status not defined. So here, so I just refresh it again. And now we are getting a uh, error cannot read property map of undefined okay so to fix this issue we just need to go to product products.js okay and here we need to write a condition okay uh, let me see where do we need to write the condition so here inside this uh, map function okay inside this map method uh, at the beginning here so here we need to add a condition that if products okay if pr products does not exist okay if products does not exist if this statement is true then we need to show loading so div loading okay and we need to close this div and if this condition is false okay then we need to cut the entire grid and paste paste inside this okay let's save this so now we are condition giving a condition that if this product is null okay then show loading and if there is any product inside this then show this okay so now if i go to the browser and if i if i refresh so now we are getting okay it is showing loading so now we need one more change okay so let's go to product actions okay inside this product actions the data that comes from fetch method need to be converted into json okay so for that we need to write const data sorry uh, not here we need to write after this line okay so const data equals to res dot json okay and then pass this data in the payload. So we need to remove this res.data and only keep data. And JSON function returns a promise. So we need to make it await. Okay. So here we need to write await like this. Okay. So now let's save this project. And now let's go to the browser. So now if I refresh, as you can see, we get the list of products okay so i have list of products right here and this products are coming from the server now let's open the redux dev tool so right click inspect and here we need to click on redux okay and if i click on fetch products and inside the diff okay you can see that by running this action changes has been done inside the state it means that your state changes from empty to a list of products okay now you can step back and run this again okay so if i click on this plus icon so it ran again and you can you saw that first it was a loading and then it shows the list of products so i'll do it again so now it is loading and then products have been loaded onto the screen so that's it about products and fetching data from the server and showing it on the screen okay so i hope you like this video and you understood how to use Redux in React. Okay, so this is it for this video and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and bye-bye. Hello friends, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to add the filter component. Okay, this is the filter component. We need to add this to 
Redux Store. So if you check this current state of the product by opening Redux Dev Tools. So if I go to Inspect and if I go to Redux and if I change this size to Excel, so there is no action inside the Redux Store. But in the finished project, if I go to Redux Store, I right click in Inspect and if I click on Redux and here if I change the size to Excel, so here as you can see filter product by size action is going to run and it just changed the redux store to this value so what we are going to do in this lesson is to add redux to the filter component okay so let me close this let me close this so so we need to go to visual studio code and inside types.js we need to duplicate this line two times and here i'll write filter underscore products underscore by size and let's copy this and paste it here and here i will write order underscore products underscore by size and let's copy this line and paste it here let's save this and now we need to go to product action dot js okay so in this we need to create two functions filter products and sort products so here we need to write export const filter products equals to and this filter products accept two parameters first one is all products that comes from server and the second one is the size we are going to filter those product based on that size okay so first one is products and the second one is going to be size and like always we are going to use react tongue so we need to return another function we need to return another function and this function has a dispatch parameter okay so dispatch and inside this function we need to dispatch an action that change the redux store as i said before an action is an object and there are two values for each action the first one is action type okay so here we need to write dispatch and this is an object so it has two values the first one is type that is going to be filter product by size okay and here we need to import it so it is already been imported for us okay so make sure there's make sure that this has been imported here from types okay and now the second one is payload okay so payload and i'm going to send an object okay so here we need an object so as this is an object so this should be inside curly brackets and this object contains two values the first one is selected size and the second one is filter product so size is going going to be size and the second one is filter products so size which is going to be size that the user select and items is going to be based on the size if size is equal to empty string if this statement is true okay if this statement is true so i just return all products okay so all products and if it is not true if this condition is not true then i use product products dot filter uh, we need to use filter method and inside i will check okay I'll take an arrow function and I'll check x dot available available sizes available sizes array it should be like this dot index of and inside uh, round brackets we need size okay so the return value of index of should be greater than or equal to zero because it's an index array okay so now we have imported this filter product by size and we have written the logic for this filter products okay let me save this file so now after implementing filter products we need to go for sort products so here we need to define another function so export const sort products equals to and sort products accept two parameters the first one is filter products 
and the second one is sort okay so the first one is filter products and the second one is sort so like before we need an arrow function so it returns an another function with dispatch as a parameter and and inside this function we need to dispatch okay and this will be an object so the type is going to be order product by it should be order product by price okay not by size so we need to go to types and here i'll change it to price okay let me copy this and i'll paste it here let me save this file and i'll go to product action and here we need order product by price and same here okay so it was a mistake so the type should be order product by products by price and for payload we need an object okay so the first value is sort itself okay so sort is going to be sort and the second value is items for items i need to sort data right here i just send it to sorted products and i need to define sorted products and i need to define sorted product at the very beginning of this function so here i'll write const sorted product so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a clone copy of filtered product so it should be like this equals to filtered products dot slice okay so i just made a copy of it okay now it's time to sort products right here okay so here i'll write i need to check sort itself so here i write if sort is equal to an empty string okay if this is true it means that it should be sorted by id so to do that i just call a function so i just call sort function on sorted product okay so sorted products dot sort and sort function accept two parameters a and b so this should be in non brackets okay so it accepts two parameters a and b and i need an arrow function and it's just written true or false so if a dot underscore id is greater than b dot underscore id if this is true okay if this statement is true then i i'm going to return one or else i'm going to return minus one okay now for the else part the sort is going to be based on price so sorted product dot sort and again it has two parameters a and b and here we need an arrow function and here we need to check if sort is equal to lowest price okay is if sort is equal to lowest if this st statement is true then a dot price is greater than b dot price and if this is true okay and if this is true then we return one or else minus one and now the second condition is that if a dot price is greater than b dot price if this is true then we'll return minus one or else one okay let me save this so now this statement so this condition okay so this condition sort on base of lowest to highest and this condition sort based on highest to lowest so we have done the sort function right here and return the sort data okay let me save this file now we need to go to product reducers and define cases for filter product by size and order product by price so let's go to product producer.js so in reducer folder inside uh, we need to go to product reducer.js and here we need to define case for filter product by size and we need to import filter product by size okay so here colon and then we need to return two values the first one will be current state so i'll be using spread operator so dot 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 state okay 
so if i change the value inside the state it's going to be merged with the current state so now i will update the filter item so here we need to write filtered items and it should come from action dot payload dot items and i also need to set the size so size that will come from action dot payload dot size okay let me save this and now we need to define the case for order product by price so case order product by price okay and here we need to import it here we need to write colon and this will return the current state so dot 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 state and now i want to and now i want to change two values the first one is going to be sort so sort and that comes from action dot payload dot sort and the second one is filtered item which comes from action dot payload dot items okay let me save this now we need to go to filter.js and connect props and action to redux store okay so let's go to filter.js so inside component folder there is a filter folder and inside there is a file filter.js okay so here at the bottom we need to use connect okay so after default i will write connect and this connect will take an arrow function and it will take two parameters the first one is map state to prop so state is going to be is going to map this way okay i am going to map size that comes from state dot products dot size okay and the second one is sort that is that comes from state dot products dot sort and the next one is product itself okay so products and that will come from state dot products dot items and the last one is filtered products and it comes from state dot products dot filtered products it is filtered products okay so this is the first parameter of connect for mapping state to prop and the second parameter is for mapping actions so here i am just going to create an object and inside the object i will import the actions which are filtered filter products and the second one is sort product okay and for connect function we need to define component that is gonna be wrapped inside the redux store so it is filter component okay so here we need to add this in a round brackets let me save this and let's import connect from react redux okay so here by default it is wrong we need to remove this and import connect from react redux and then we need to import these two actions okay so these are the two actions so let's go at the top and here we need to write import and the name of the action is filter products so let me copy this from dot dot slash dot dot slash actions slash product action okay and the second one is sort products so let me copy this and here we need to paste it okay so let me save this file so there is one change here uh, below uh, this filter product it should be filtered items and not filter products okay so filtered items okay so let me save this and now it's time to show loading so if there is no filter product 
so here after return we need to add a condition so filter filtered products okay if it is not equal to so here we need to put an exclamation if it is not equal to filter products so if this condition is true then we need to show loading okay so we need to add div and inside div we need to add loading okay and if the statement is false then we need to show this div okay so this div starts from here and ends here okay so now let me save this so we have added the condition successfully now here instead of count okay we need to write filtered products dot length okay let me save this and now we need to go to app.js and inside that we don't require filtered product function okay so let's go to filtered product function okay we don't require this because we move this uh, into product actions okay so let me remove this and also we don't require sort products okay so let me remove this also so let me see where it closes so here it starts from here and it ends here okay so let me save this file now inside the render function inside this render function uh, uh, for the filter component we don't require all this because uh, they are coming from Redux store okay so let me remove this and save this and for products we don't require this line okay because this is coming from Redux store okay let's save this and now we need to go to product reducer .js. and here in the uh, fetch product case here we need filtered items and that will come from action dot payload okay let's save this and after updating the filter items it's time to go to filter.js so this will come from props so i need to copy this and instead of count because we have removed count so let's remove this and we will add this okay filtered products okay and then uh, for on change okay so if i scroll down let me see where is the on change okay for on change uh, inside the order and inside the uh, filter i mean the select size these are the two on change so we need to fit the current products okay so let let's do that so i will add an arrow function so here uh, i need to add an arrow function and here i'll pass event okay and here inside the round brackets we will pass filtered filtered products and the second argument will be event dot target dot value okay this is the value which the user will select from here okay and similarly we will do it for filtered product okay so here i will add an arrow function here i will pass an event Here I need to pass products, okay, and the second argument will be event dot target dot value. Okay, this will be the value selected by the user from here. Let me save this file. So let's check in the browser. Okay, so here I'm getting products is not defined. Okay, this should also come as a prop. So here we need to add it. Okay, let me save this. Okay, put a comma and save this. And let's check it in the browser. The property length of undefined filtered product. Okay. So here, okay, here uh, I have done a mistake. It should not be filter product, it should be filtered product. Okay, let me copy this and let me paste it here. Let's save this file and let's go to the browser and let me refresh. Okay, so now uh, everything is working fine. So now let's go to Visual Studio Code. Now we need to go to products.js and here we need to use a filtered product, okay? So for that we need to go at the bottom and in the mapping section, okay? In the mapping section of connect, 
instead of mapping all the items i just map filter items okay so here we need to write filtered items okay let me save this so by changing this line of code instead of showing all products i'll just show the filtered products okay so now let's go to the browser and if i refresh and now let's check uh, in the redux store so right click inspect and we need to go to redux okay and uh, if i select excel so here is the size excel and here you can see only four products okay and now if i select medium so now there are only two items and in redux store you can see medium okay so this code is working fine let me close this and now let's go to visual studio code now we need to go to filter.js and here we need to set the value to latest okay first it was blank but we need to set it to latest let me save this and now in product action.js i will compare sort with latest okay so latest let me save this file so if it is latest then it will sort by id and if it is not then it will sort by price okay so let's check the result so if i refresh and if i go to inspect and if I go to Redux and here if I select latest okay so here you can see it is sorted by latest okay and now if I select lowest so it will select the lowest price first so the lowest priced come first and inside the order product by price you will see the lowest okay you can see the difference inside here okay so here is the product filter item and the sort filter product has been changed okay so here you can see this has been changed to lowest so let me close this and if i select uh, highest so now all the products with the high price comes first okay and the lowest will come at the last and now if i select the size to m so it works and if i select here lowest it just applied to the filter products and if i select excel so it applied with the filtered order okay so if i select highest it will be from the highest to the lowest and if i select medium okay it will be from highest to the lowest so this works perfectly if i select lowest the lowest will come first here if i select excel okay so this works perfectly fine and here also the number of products shows two okay so this is also perfect and if i select all so now you can see six products so all the products has has been dis displayed so that's it we have successfully moved the filtered component to the redux store and if you go to app.js we have made the code more shorter uh, by removing two functions the short function and filtered uh, filter product function and uh, here we can remove the data because this data is coming from backend so let's remove this and here also we don't require this because it is coming from backend okay and here the sort and size uh, we don't require because they are coming from redux store okay so i just remove that so this is it uh, i hope you like the video and if you uh, this was a lengthy lecture so if you don't understand then anything so you can just uh, check the entire lecture and you can just practice it okay so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back in this lecture we are going to add this card component to redux store so by the end of the course if you go to the finished project and if you right click and if i uh, if i inspect and if i go to redux section here if i click on add to cart so as you can see there should be add to cart action right here and if i click on remove button there should be an action remove from cart okay
and it should update the state based on it. So for that, uh, we need to go to Visual Studio Code and this we need to do it in our project. OK, so right now this functionality is not there in our project. So let's go to Visual Studio Code and first of all, we need to go to types. OK, types.js and here we need to create add to cart and remove from cart const constants. OK, so here I will write export const add underscore to underscore cart. That is going to be add to cart. OK, let me copy this and I'll paste it here. And the second one is export const remove from cart. That is going to be removed from cart. OK, let me paste it here. Let's save this file and this is done. Now we need to create cart action dot JS file. OK, inside action folder. So let's go to actions folder and right click new file and the name of the file will be cart actions dot JS. Okay, let me close this and inside that we are going to create an action. So it should be export const add to cart equals to and this will take two parameters. The first parameter is items. It's the current items in the cart. OK, it is the current item in the cart and the second one is product. That we are going to add to the cart. OK, and now like always we will return another function and this function will have a parameter dispatch. And inside this function, we need to make a clone copy of items. So here we need to write const const cart items equals to items dot slice. Okay, let me save this file. And here I'm going to search into cart items to make sure there is a product of this type inside the cart or not. So I will define a for each function over the cart items. So cart items dot for each. And inside this I'll take an arrow function. And here the parameter will be X and here I will check the condition if X dot underscore ID equals to product dot underscore id so if this statement is true it means that this product exists inside this card so i will set the variable already exist to true so here i'll write already exist that is going to be true and update the value of count for this card item so x dot count plus plus OK and don't forget to define this variable. So let me copy this and here we'll define the variable. So let already exist that is going to be false. OK, let me save this file and after this I will check if already exist is false. OK, so for that we need to write exclamation and already exist. OK, if this is not equal to already exist means if this is false then I need to add this item to the cart item so cart items dot push and here I will use spread operator so dot 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 and here we need all properties of product so product and add count as a number of item of this product in the cart. OK, and for sure this should be one because at the beginning I'm going to add one item of each product to the cart. OK, so let's save this. And now it's time to call dispatch. So dispatch. And dispatch accepts two parameters. The first one is. Type so type that is going to be add to cart. OK, and if I click here, 
it will automatically import add to cart from types and the second one is payload and the payload is cart item itself so cart items and don't forget to update the local storage based on the new cart items so local storage dot set items set item and here we need to define the key so cart items and we need to write json dot stringify that is going to be cart items okay let's save this so now it's time to implement remove from cards so here we need to write export const remove from cart that will accept two parameters the first one is items and the second one is product and this will return another function with a parameter dispatch okay and inside this function in one line of code we are going to remove this product from the cart item so it should be const cart items equal to now first we need to make a duplicate from items so items dot slice and then we will use filter method so dot filter and inside this we will take an arrow function and here the parameter will be x okay so for each item inside the items okay so for each item inside this items i'm going to apply filter so if current item means x dot underscore id so if this current item is not equal to product dot underscore id if this is not equal to product dot id if the current item is not equal to product dot underscore id i just return true okay it means that if an item inside the cart is not equal to the product dot underscore id it's gonna add it to the cart items okay so by the end of this line of code we get rid of the product from the cart and now it's time to dispatch okay so dispatch and dispatch will take two parameters type which is going to be remove from cart if i click here so it will automatically import from types okay and the second one is payload and the payload will be cart items itself okay and don't forget to update the local storage so local storage dot set item and here the key will be cart item and here we need to write json dot stringify because local storage accept only strings so stringify and here we need to write cart items okay let me save this file okay so we have successfully implemented remove from cart action and add to cart actions okay and now it's time to implement cart reducers.js so we need to go to reducers folder okay so this is the reducer folder and we need to right click new file and we need to set the new file to be cart reducer reducers.js okay and reducer is a function so export const cart reducer equals to and this function accepts parameter two parameters the first one is current state so state and we need to set the state to empty object and the second one is action like this okay and inside this function there is a switch case for action type okay so switch action dot type and inside this switch case we need to compare with add to cart so case add to cart and in the case add to cart what we need to do is we need to update the state based on the new cart item so it should return 
cart items which is going to be action dot payload dot cart items let me save this and for the default case so default for the default case we will need to return the current state okay so state let me save this file so now for the default value of state oh it is state not start okay so for the default value of state instead of empty object i will take local storage okay so let's remove this empty object and here i'll write local storage dot get item and this is going to be cart items okay but as you know the return value of local storage is string so we need to convert this into an javascript object so json dot parse okay and inside this we need to add local storage value okay and now let's implement the case for remove cart okay so here we need to write case remove from cart if i click here so it is automatically imported from types okay and this is going to return cart item from action dot payload dot cart items okay let's save this file and for default state we are going to set the cart item property so cart item cart items that is going to be json dot pass okay local storage so wrap this inside curly braces so the entire thing should be in curly brackets like this and what if if i don't have a value like this so if it does not exist okay so if it does not exist so i'll just use an empty array okay as a string because we need to return a string and this string is going to convert it into real empty array okay let me save this file now we need to go to cart.js and connect that to redux store so inside cart folder there is cart.js so here at the end we need to use connect method okay so connect and inside connect the first parameter is going to be map state to prop so state and it's going to be map the first prop that i'm going to define here is cart items and that is and that comes from state dot cart dot cart items okay and the second parameter is going to be actions that we are going to use in the cart so here inside curly braces i will add only one action we require only one action that is remove from cart okay and we need to wrap the entire thing into round brackets okay so here it is opening and here it will close so let me save this file and now we need to import connect from react redux so at the top of the screen so at the top of the screen uh, import connect this is wrong not from mongoose it is from react redux okay let me save this file now we need to go to store.js but before that we will go to cart reducer.js and here instead of equal to we need colon okay it was by mistake that i added equal to so let's save this file remember in cart reducers.js here there was equal to but we need colon okay now we need to go to store.js okay so let's go to store.js and inside and inside that next to product reducer okay next to product reducer we need to add cart okay that comes from cart reducer okay and here we need to import cart reducer from reducer slash cart reducer okay let's save this file and next we need to go to products.js okay so inside the folder products there is products.js and here at the bottom we need to add add to cart okay add to cart and this needs to be imported at the top okay so let's go at the top and see whether it is imported or not 
So once once again, let's write it again. Add. If I click here, okay. So now we need to import. So let's import it. Okay, import. Add to cart from dot dot slash dot dot slash actions slash cart actions. Okay, let's save this file. So this should be in curly braces. Okay, because it is not default export. So let's save this file. Now we need to go to app.js and we need to remove cart props. So let's go to app.js. Okay. So inside app.js, we need to remove these props. These are not required at all. Okay. So let's remove this. Let's save this file. And here also we don't require this prop. Okay. So let's remove this because uh, it comes from Redux store. And okay. So it will come from Redux store. And now we can remove the functions. Okay. So here we can remove this add to cart. This is not required. We can remove this create order. This is not required. And we can also remove remove from cart. This is also not required. And there is no need to have state. Okay. So let's remove this. And even we can remove the constructor. Okay, so if I save this file, so the code is looking much better and cleaner. Okay, so we have removed everything which is not required in app.js. We only uh, we can only see the components and we don't have any logic here in this app.js. Okay, so now it's time to check uh, whatever we have done in the browser. So let's go to the browser. So here I'm getting an error. Mm, card.js remove card is not defined. So let's go to card.js. Let me copy this. Remove cart. I think we have not imported this remove cart. So let's import uh, remove cart. Okay, so import remove cart from dot dot slash dot dot slash actions slash cart action let's check in cart action remove cart yeah so this is correct let's save this file and now let's go to the browser if i refresh okay now i'm getting all the products okay so so now if i remove any item from cart so i'm getting this error item dot slice is not a function Okay, so here there is some issue. Okay, so let's go to Visual Studio Code and let's go to cart action.js. So in add to cart, uh, instead of getting the current item from items, uh, we will get it from get state. Okay, so let's remove this items. Okay, and after dispatch, I will write get state. Okay, and instead of item dot slice, uh, we can write get state. Okay, get state dot cart dot cart items dot slice. So let's remove this items and it should be get state dot cart dot cart items dot slice. Okay, and similarly, we have to do it for remove from cart. So let's remove this items. And we can get it from get state. Okay, get state. And here, instead of items dot slice, we can write get state dot cart dot cart items. So here we need cart. 
dot cart items dot slice okay get state dot cart dot cart items dot slice let's save this so now we can check and we can check it in the browser so let's remove this refresh and now if i remove it will get removed and let's go to inspect and let's go to redux section okay here as you can see remove from cart action has been uh, shown so if i click remove again so here there is remove cart from action and it the state has been updated okay so let's add any product to the cart so let's add this first product so so here i'm not able to add product to the cart let me refresh so there is an issue let's check what is the problem so if i go to visual studio code and here uh, i have done a mistake in products.js this is an action so we need to remove this from here and we need to paste it here okay so let me save this and now let's go to the browser and check it so if i refresh and now if i go inspect redux and now if i click on add to cart here as you can see add to cart action has been generated and the product has been added to cart let's add one more product okay so this is added to the cart and this state has been updated okay now let's remove it from the cart so let's click on it so remove from the cart and here remove from the cart action has been generated so as you can see the state is an empty uh, array okay in the cart the cart items uh, in the cart the cart items is an empty array so this is it i hope you like all the videos and uh, uh, this is how we have used uh, redux in react to implement this cart items and this products okay so if i go to app.js okay so so here is a clean app.js file component okay so you can just go through each and every lecture and you can uh, create your own uh, e-commerce store and uh, i hope you like the series of this videos and i hope you like the uh, course so i'll see you in some other course and in some other videos till then take care and bye bye